What is good, people? <laughs> How are we doing today? Today, we're going to have a very interesting conversation because, ladies and gentlemen, first of all, uh, for, welcome to the show. Um, you guys could be anywhere in the world right now, but you're here with Duke the Don, and I very, very much appreciate it. So as you're on your way in, because we're about to have one of our spectacular roast especially one of those dudes that uh, has been around in this space for uh, quite a while but uh you know haven't really gotten a beat down that he really deserves and for some reason this motherfucker feels like he is emboldened <laughs> to, to to really think that his shit taken outside of his platform not even outside this platform but outside this manosphere kind of conversation it, it don't stink Right. And today we're going to prove that this particular gentleman exposed himself on a massive scale that only us. All right. And you guys are going to be able to understand. And literally, guys, at the end of this video, I would hope that the rest of the world can share the same exact understanding as we do. All right. And the only way that could be possible is if you guys smash the like button, OK, to get this particular video going viral. And the person we're talking about. Well, first things first. First things first. You guys already got to know. Uh What's the uh, what's the word on the audio? Let's make sure the audio was good. It's kind of out of the way, so like y'all can see my uh not so pretty face, but let's go get it, guys. Welcome to the show. As you guys know, it's Duke the Don. And guys, we are gonna be talking about one of our biggest, biggest arch nemesis of this particular platform, and that is including yours truly, the one and only Fax Kellerman. All right, <laughs> Stephen A. Pimp. All right. <laughs> Lord Marquard, yes, the guy that couldn't get enough of his grandmama's uh, uh, pouch, uh, 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 couches, uh, uh, clothes. All right, listen, this guy basically cuts out his uh, grandmama's curtains and uh, makes suits out of them and then sells it online. All right, so he can get over that. But we are going to be talking about him today because, ladies and gentlemen, our wish came true. All right, now if you guys don't know what I'm talking about. Go look at the last episode, all right? And last episode, we talked about Destiny and, you know, Lord Marquardt. It wasn't even just Destiny and Lord Marquardt, but particularly the other uh, uh, show that included a fake pimp, like Little Kelpie, right? Little Kelpie was a fake pimp. And uh, during that show, we had a conversation basically talking about, you know what? Wouldn't this be nice if uh, some other pimp that we knew in the manosphere would also go on this particular show and uh, <laughs> kind of just help us explain what the fuck was going on behind the scenes and how, you know, you go from a college uh, or community college student to a pimp, like, or community college student, John Hopkins, UC Berkeley, and then we can't figure out where the pimp came in into play. And we were hoping that this particular conversation he was going to have on this show was going to feature someone that was going to question on his pimphood, right? not so fast people not so fast we did get what we want him getting on no jumper but unfortunately he had to interview probably one of the most uh meat riding nigga i have ever met in my entire life and listen i don't know who this person is i think it's flaca uh or flaco whatever the fuck he calls his name all right he pretty much looks like a uh if you order dj academics off the of wish that's what that nigga looks like <laughs> no cap bro that's who this dude looked like all right and it's like it's like you take DJ Academics off a of wish, and then you had a baby with Fresh Prince CEO that couldn't figure out the stuttering problem, and you got Flacco, <laughs> okay? And this guy was basically meat writing this guy hard. And I thought, you know what, someone like, you know, No Jumper, or at least the Adam22 uh, platform that hosts a lot of these other people that come on the show and, you know, interview all the other guests. I, I, I honestly thought that there was some level of research about the guests that was done. Um, but after watching that interview, it seemed like uh, this man just let this fool get away with a whole lot. So, yes, in fact, our wish was granted and him going on the show and, you know, basically, you know, explaining his backstory and life story. However, we couldn't really get to the nitty gritty because there wasn't a really solid. I mean, Flacco wasn't really a solid interviewer to really press someone like that. Matter of fact, Flacco uh, seems like someone who's like a beta male. Uh, and, and I say this with like. With, with strong, strong conviction, okay? Because this dude was just meat riding hard. Even even when it came to stories that were obviously just like, hey, man, this guy sounds like he's selling me something, right? It, it just wasn't really called out appropriately or none of the situations or even answers that he gave 
particularly about his net worth. And we're going to cover that too as well. Really actually were pressed, okay, to the point where you viewers weren't able to get the accurate answer of who this particular gentleman is, all right? And essentially, he just kind of got pretty much free clout off of a platform that did no research whatsoever. So Adam22 uh, and your platform, realistically, we're going to prove today how these motherfuckers don't actually do research on the people they actually interview or bring on the guests. And it's more so about just clout. So what we said before about Adam22 and the No Jumper podcast pretty much being the Jerry Springer of just YouTube in general, that kind of goes make, makes sense. Because after we watch what we watch today, um, yeah, we're going to have to just there's some things that I have to make sure that we cover, you know, because there were some facts that were missing. All right. So that's going to be the point of this show. And for those of you guys who are don't, who really don't know who the fuck we're talking about, we're talking about our YouTuber's favorite YouTuber, uh, the person who actively cuts up his grandmama's couches to make suits out of it. Lord Marquand. Uh, give it a round of applause, people. All right. This man has been all over this space. And now some of you guys might be like, Duke, <laughs> Duke. Leave Lord Marquand alone. <laughs> Why won't you leave this man alone, okay? He, 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 he ain't do nothing to you. You know what? You just a hater. Yeah, mm, yeah, that's right. Duke, you a hater. Uh, all you do is just talk about this man. And, you know, he's done nothing wrong. Hey, listen, for y'all y'all, y'all little motherfuckers out there that are talking about, oh, you have no reason to talk about this man. Hey, I have every right in the book to talk about this guy because, first of all, it's fucking YouTube, all right? To get ahead in this fucking game, like, everyone reacts to everything, all right? Literally, YouTube reaction videos to fucking crazy shit is the mainstay in the manosphere, all right? And not, not just the manosphere, just the mainstay in YouTube, but in the manosphere, particularly the red pill world, all right? Because the red pill is just filled with cringe people who you know just feel like they know or have what it takes to coach young men but realistically they're scammers themselves all right it is if you come into the red pill space it is just a wealth of just cringe content that realistically almost every other youtuber outside of the space react to for some of you guys who are saying oh well why are you always constantly reacting to this guy no 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 it's, it's first of all youtube culture and b if there's anybody else that deserves the right to react to this dude it's pretty much me because we already know this guy doesn't like to admit it but we had a beef and basically he lost that massively <laughs> all right thought he can catch me on certain things but didn't and here's the one thing that you all got to understand for you guys don't know what's going on I am the only person, this is the only channel in this entire space that has ever really truly exposed this man for who the hell he really is, right? When he, you hear a lot large that this guy's a technologist, this guy's a millionaire. Oh, we're going to debunk that. This nigga's broke. <laughs> not, not broke, broke in the sense of you mean broke, broke like a homeless man, but he's not a millionaire. Matter of fact, I would, I would actually wager this man makes no more than $200,000 a year guaranteed with youtube and assassins and whatnot if you guys don't believe me we've already done massive massive episodes basically exposing this shit already letting this fool know that <laughs> yo we know your background we know everything and for someone who claims to be what he is <laughs> there's a lot of things not matching up bro all right and you know me especially guys at the duke the Don channel when shit don't add up we start subtracting and uh, subtracting is what we did. And we found out that his Fletch app was nothing more than a white label company, first of all. And second of all, <laughs> realistically, this guy never really made millions. Actually, uh, three companies invested total in his business and one of them went bankrupt. Two of them never actually exited the company, meaning Fletch app was a loss. But I, I'm getting too ahead of myself. What am I talking about? Let's go ahead and talk about why this man is even in my mouth to begin with. All right. Because he recently went on this uh, No Jumper show. And I fuck with the channel. Uh, Adam22, I like the shit that he does. So this is nothing against them whatsoever. But what this is meant to do is highlight essentially why a lot of fake people tend to get ahead, especially in this YouTube space, right? Because guys, what we do here specifically on this channel, we expose a lot of the these manosphere grifters that are actually hurting young men. And the way they're hurting young men is by lying to them about their upbringing, pretty much like the, uh, the you know, you know, the, you know, that fitness guy that we were just talking about, right? The, the liver guy, the liver king people or the person, right? And he talked about how he was never on drugs, but then came to find out and apologize that he was about, uh, about the drugs and the stereotypes. Steroids. That's the exact same thing. For a for, for a long time coming now, we've had a situation where a lot of would be 
red pill leaders are popping out of nowhere, coming out with the secret sauce for a lot of you young men out there to be very successful in whatever shit that you want to do, right? Because the thing is, here's a here's actually the sad reality of it. A lot of young men are actually suffering out there, and it sucks, all right? There's no role models. There's not a whole lot of guidance. And unfortunately, the people who are coming out here saying that they have the, the sauce – to help men become very, very successful, they're actually the ones who are mainly hurting young men. Now, here's the crazy thing about human psychology, and we in this channel have come to understand, and we will take this in stride, okay? A lot of times when you tell people the truth about what's going on, or even the truth about the cults or the situations that they believe in, they typically tend to attack you, right? Because you are op ultimately opening up a reality that they were not prepared for. You are ultimately opening up a reality where they've invested time, they've invested money, they've invested like energy even coming out to meet some of their uh, their content, favorite content creators, only to realize that there's a YouTuber on here with valid facts, basically saying that this guy is a liar and a scammer. Now, if you were that 23-year-old male who was coming up and you were listening to this slick talking scammer uh, about, you know, life advice, pimping advice, or money advice, and then you realize that this person's life wasn't what it actually crept up to be, yeah, you know, your first instinct is to reject the truth. And by rejecting the truth, you attack the person who's telling it and let me tell you something <laughs> your boy doesn't give a fuck <laughs> like i don't care i'm gonna keep talking about this man i'm gonna ex keep exposing this man until the day we're all proven right and you already know as much as i do there's nothing else that's Ah, more beautiful than just being right, okay? Now, we were right on the first case when Destiny exposed this clown about him literally being a scammer. I mean, I mean, that was a quickness. Like, <laughs> that with a quickness, after just him beefing with uh, Destiny and Destiny doing a quick little research, found out that this guy was a scammer, right? And, and we were the ones who were basically able to go into the deep dive. And we've done multiple deep dives on this guy. If you guys want to check it out, go ahead. We have multiple videos on this guy. Uh, doesn't mean we're going to stop because we're going to do a little mini deep dive in there but at this point realistically i don't think lord marquard and that's his name <laughs> lord marquard i don't think he's really worthy of doing like a full-on hour two hour long presentation literally just go see the other clips i got receipts to prove it this guy scanned his companies scammed them scammed them and basically ran away with the money and now is on YouTube pretending to be rich and coaching other young men on how to be wealthy and successful. But not just that, how to also code an NFT from the command line or a command prompt. <laughs> I don't know how you can code an NFT from a command prompt. I'm still, I'm going to get my command prompt pulled up here in just a second, but you can help me understand how to code an NFT from a command prompt because I would like to know because listen, command prompt is free with <laughs> all Windows devices, right? And you know, it's different variations for other different like if you're using linux or you know uh, uh, uh ios systems or whatever mac systems i'm sorry right you're you're, you're looking at your know, different terminals right but we want to know what kind of command line he's talking about so we're gonna have to figure that shit out but uh <laughs> i digress this guy we basically expose that he's not what he says he is now unfortunately the videos that I did have out there that were very, very damning and exposing not just him, but the assistant or the assistant he loves to gloat about it, particularly in this no jumper interview that we're gonna talk about. Yeah, uh, this Quasimodo looking bitch over here. Uh, let me let me just make sure I uh, get the right. Hey, this girl right over here. How you doing, baby? Bridget, you look as sexy as ever, baby. How you doing? Uh, yeah, this girl right here, she has been with this clown since the whole Fletch app days. And yes, that includes a $250 Fletch app scam that this guy's involved in. <laughs> oh, you guys didn't know about that? Oh, for those so those guys who are new, um, don't worry. I might do a little recap, but you definitely want to watch the other videos because I definitely do go in depth, okay? Uh, this chick over here is still with this guy. And all the videos that I had basically breaking all of that down, he deleted them. Yeah, no, no, he, he he petitioned to get those canceled by YouTube. And even look at my community section, I have all that stuff up. I have the receipts all up there. So this guy that claims that he doesn't beef, right? The guy that claims that he doesn't care about criticisms, that little YouTubers are just little YouTubers, it's a lie. Because this little YouTuber over here, this little piggy right over here, was able to get this guy and his whole operation so pissed off that not only does he fucking talk about me, and he made a rap about me, by the way, for those of you guys who are saying, oh, Duke, at this point, you're kind of obsessed with this guy. No, I don't. you don't see me making rap songs about this nigga. <laughs> like, what the fuck? I got under this man's skin so bad, 
he made a rap video about me. And Lord Marquardt, I am flattered. Now, listen, I'm not a scared of like your homie Kevin Samuels. Or, or, I mean, you claim he's your homie on the No Jumper show, and we're going to prove that's a lie. Uh, but, you know, I'm not a scared of guzzler, so we're not going to meet up and take selfies, okay? But I'm just saying, bro, like, listen, the fact that you made a rap video or a rap song about me, I'm so flattered. But then I got to ask your fucking fanboys, who the fuck is the obsessed one here? Because I think that's kind of mighty weird that you make a rap video about a nobody YouTuber that you don't really give a fuck about. But then why would you give a fuck about a no? Oh, that's right. Because they exposed you in a way that it really fucking hurts. You see, you talk about nobody YouTubers a lot. But like what you guys got to understand about the Duke the Don channel. And I kind of let you all know at the start of our channel from the get go. It's not just me. Like, I work with a team of engineers that are here, that work with this team, whether it's software, network, you go ahead and admit it. So we have the abilities to get into situations that most other YouTubers in the manosphere do not. And we're being able to be privy to information that we're able to expose this guy's whole backstory and operation, right? And those videos that detailed all of them, including the one that involved his girlfriend, Bridget, that likes to pretend like his assistant, right? Uh, he took them all down, and I have proof of that right there. And you know what? That was the whole reason I was going to start a Patreon. So for those of you guys who are saying, you're just doing this for money, Duke. Nigga, I've been on this platform for a year and a half, and I don't even have a Patreon properly set up yet. So uh, you go ahead and tell me who really gives a fuck about the money. The guy that streams every fucking day, or the person who just comes out here tells you the truth and then leaves without asking you guys for anything and that's the problem a lot of times these guys see people who are like you guys who are followers you see people who are genuinely here to help you and you can you you will crucify them the way, same way you would crucify anyone who's out here to fucking help you you would get rid of them because deep down a lot of men nowadays, we've gotten so deluded we've become so delusional we would much rather be lied to than to be spoken the truth. And there were no greater amount of lies that were told in this particular podcast than the No Jumper podcast that featured this dude named Flacco. And I don't got no problem with Flacco. I just wish that Flacco did his research before he brought this guy on and asked the proper question. So our only hope is to make sure that our boy, uh, Lord Marquard, okay, the couch pattern wearing suit guy is able to go ahead and get another shot at the no jumper, but not with this Flacco guy who is basically meat rotten all day. I want to have him be questioned about his pimp hood, okay? And for those of you guys who did see that episode, what we're going to do is basically review part of the podcast about what he said, his backstory, his upbringing, and we are going to compare that to the actual truth. And one thing I want to go ahead and make clear today for you guys is that realistically, what you have to understand on YouTube, a lot of this shit is for entertainment. And some of these po podcast platforms will invite people with sketchy backgrounds, whether it, they paid for it, whether they paid for it, it wasn't a genuine invite. You were paid. All right. Uh, no, 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 no. I'm not. I'm not just saying that. But guys, sorry about that. Whether they paid for it or they were genuinely invite, how a lot of these podcasts would really just allow you to come up here and talk all that shit as long as it gets the money or views either way. All right. With that being said, guys, as we get into this video, please do me a huge favor to help this go viral. Hit the like button, all right? And uh, if you fucking with the channel, go ahead and subscribe button because we're about to get into some ish today. So, guys, uh, as usual, please let me know if you guys can understand the audio or hear the audio so I can make adjustments in real time. And let's go ahead and play this son of a bitch. the way i've conducted myself yeah. on and off camera when people want to play games if it was that time i'll probably have their heads on a spear in my front yard you heard me yeah. had a head on my dinner table <laughs> dipping breadsticks in the eye sockets you yeah did. now that's a yeah. fact now because i see you boxing too man I, yeah. I was like well hold on now bro like yeah. how does somebody get crafted like this bro like smart <laughs> as hell right yeah. articulate well put together like and then you like are physical beasts as well like you can fight how like
My bad, guys. The fucking sound was going on. My, my, the, 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 <laughs> the, sound, the audio went off. My bad, y'all. My bad. My bad. My bad. What I was basically saying is, my bad. That was like five minutes. Go ahead and cut. We'll, 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 we'll timestamp that. But uh, basically what I was saying is, someone like who this guy is, Flacco, who's basically saying, oh, my God, I can't believe that there's a guy. <laughs> there's a guy who can actually be in tech, be a millionaire. And also be a boxer? Like, how in the hell can that be? All right? I, how can that be possible? Okay, listen, Flacco, I, I, I know, like, this is this is something you're not really used to, but um, being fit, like, you know, boxing and things like that, that, that's something that comes down to, you know, your level of mentality if you decide to get fit. And just looking like your over, at your overall uh, physique over here, I see that you're the one who looks at fitness as a huge ass mountain to climb so you decide that you don't want to do it so because you look at another person who uh is dressed up like the she hawk over here and <laughs> decide that oh this guy is a technologist and also a boxer oh my god like how can you do that hey listen i'm gonna tell you this there are multiple people who are in you know pretty sophisticated sophisticated uh fields of study or profession and they're still able to be physically fit okay then it's not a surprising thing um just looking at your uh physical uh uh your physical capabilities over here i can see that that's something that you have put ahead of your you know yourself probably a mountain that you yourself flaco cannot climb and that's fine but just because you haven't climbed that mountain because you took an iq genius test right so uh it, just because you were dumb enough to not climb that mountain and you know be physically fit does not mean that it's not the same thing for everybody else so that's not a unique intrinsic thing and that's a theme you guys are going to notice with this flaco gentleman here it seems like he's actually a skittle guzzler <laughs> <laughs> right, he seems like he's the genuine skittle guzzler that uh Lord Marquardt claimed that Kevin Samuels was. But I, I just had to interject in that little part because this glorification you see from this dude over here, this discount fresh wannabe over here, like it, it, it does not stop throughout the whole entire episode, which led me to believe that this clown over here didn't do his research on who the fuck he's actually talking to or who the fuck he's actually promoting to the no jumper audience which is crazy to me. Is it just severe training, preparation, or like would you just like just naturally gifted these skills, man? Very few human beings are naturally gifted. Anything. Oh, by the way, finance man, I got my boys looking into that right now. Yeah, right? that's true. You know, I'm certainly not a LeBron size. <laughs> very young, yeah. Pretty much normal size black guy, <laughs> yeah. right? But, you know, you can read my whole story in the black box. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I was born into a fairly harsh environment uh -huh. and, and I went through real things. And so when you learn how to thrive in that environment and then you're intelligent enough to be able to get out of that environment and you learn how to move and shake in different economic strata, mm -hmm. you really have to be the complete man. And one thing my grandmother told me who grew up picking cotton, who stopped schooling in the third grade. Wow. You heard me? So you you make it up out of Lone Oak, Arkansas under Jim Crow, like you you different. Yeah. And she told me, she says, look, I don't care about your feelings. The world doesn't care about your feelings. If you want to win as a black man, you have to outperform and work. All right. So, guys, what you see here, the drip, this is called the She-Hulk drip. Drip. All right. All right. This is the you see the green suit. All right. It's got the felt and everything over here. All right. This is meant to be if this at any point, this guy, this nigga transforms to the massive Skittle Cuzzler. He know he's always been. All right. This suit is big enough to encompass all that bullshit that this dude's about to spill. So do not be surprised. All right. He is known for I wonder what couches you had to cut up to get this bitch on me here, bro, because if you thought this shit was drip, it is not. And the fact that it's all, you know, you got the little, nice little, you know, little soft, little suave, little, what it was, suede. It's like a suede little feel to it, right? It almost makes me feel like you are you are leaning into this pimp thing really heavy. It's just unfortunate that we didn't have a certified pimp to really question you on, uh, you know, certain things that really should have been questioned on. But hopefully we get a part two on this. Let's continue. Three times harder than a white man. Whether that's true or not, mm -hmm. that's what I was raised on, which is nobody cares about your story. Let's get this work in. And I always knew that I deserved great things. And I was the poorest kid in the hood. Mm. Right. So when I looked around. That's different. Bruh. <laughs> Being the poorest of my poor niggas is different. Yeah. Yeah. When everybody <laughs> had a bike, I had to run along their bike. Yeah. You dig? That's different. That creates a different kind of hunger in you. 
also teaches you about human nature because when I was running along on their bike, nobody stopped like, hey, man, you want to mm. give my bike a try? Like, I see you don't have a bike. So I had a very different mentality. One, it made me a little bit more empathetic, mm. made me respect people who don't have. But it also made me a beast that wanted to go get it. And then also growing up in a harsh environment, you know, if you don't throw hands, what you doing out here? You're going to be a victim out here. You heard me? As a fact. Yeah. So, yeah, I throw hands in the boxing ring, but I've also thrown a lot of hands Get before I ever made it to the boxing ring. And that's why I tell these cats, like, bro, like, you could look at the velvet pimping. <laughs> you heard me? You could look at the mariachi pimping. The velvet pimping? All right, bro. I'll, hey, listen, he said it, not me. Pimping. Yeah. And sure, I'm your favorite YouTuber's favorite youtuber yeah. but at the end of the day don't play games with me little homie don't mention my name on your video that's true yo trust me, we gonna get into yeah. all the foolery right regarding that right in a real way but like uh speak on dna though man because like again like i've always been fascinated right by just yeah. great people right because i'll be trying to figure out man like so are your parents like as high iq as you or like how does that work that's a really good question if i could say i got anything from my lineage yeah. Um, that was an advantage. My father's a, a very brave man. Mm. You know, my father was a, a drug dealer, a dealer in hard drugs. Mm -hmm. He did a lot of time behind that, but he was always the most popular guy in the neighborhood. He was built like a bodybuilder. Mm -hmm. He used to lift heavy. Um, and, and, you know, he was, he was a real goon. He put his work in. So his name rings bells in his neighborhood. And I got that same fire in me. Um, in terms of my mother, I can't identify many Oh, uh, by the way, as as we're actively speaking, uh, our team has hacked his entire family. So we know, including Bridget. Bridget, how you doing, baby? We saw that you helped take down that video that we put up last time. But we we know everything. So like, and the crazy thing is, like, we've been since the morning we've been beefing with this dude. We we've, we've known like exactly who the fuck this nigga is and exactly where the hell he's at, right? So for those of you guys who have been DMing me about trying to figure out a Lord Marquard area or where he's at to meet up, I just might link that at the end of this video. A lot of it. So please stay tuned because uh, if you think that's crazy, you wouldn't believe what this guy is capable of. And listen, for those of you guys who have boxes of shit or crap to send over to Lord Marquardt as a token of your uh, respect and homage to his incredible intelligence, you might want to click on that link I'm going to be linking at the end of this video because it's going to give you guys a lot about who this guy is, where he resides. And if you want to go ahead and check Bridget out and, you know, say hello to her, you can do that too as well. Yeah, I'm not playing games this time, bro. We really buy here to fuck you up. That's what we about to do. You doxing fucking woman, a random woman and a fucking child, bro. <laughs> this shit's not over. And the bigger you get, the harder you're going to fall. I'm going to tell you, we really fucking with goons out here, bro. We not just average niggas out here. You about to get fucked. And the fact that you out here spilling all these lies about your fucking backstory. First of all, if you... Damn it, I forgot. The video we did doing a deep dive about this dude's daddy over here, like he likes to talk about. We, we went over his prison sentence. We went over all of that information. He took that shit down. I, I thought you were such a big YouTuber, right? You were such a guy who wasn't afraid of anything. How the hell did you take down something that we we, we found about your daddy, right? You oh, 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 it means that some of the stories you wrote in your book didn't match up to your daddy's shit, did it? Oh, okay, that makes sense. But we'll link all that shit that we have below so you guys definitely want to stay tuned by the end of this episode or at least click the link below but i want y'all to know something understand how this guy structures his words and answers questions and you got to understand the cadence and the way he pretty much redirects certain things and how he basically lies just plainly on camera right which is which is ridiculous to me that he's able to go on a massive platform like this and get away with this bullshit. but i'm just letting you know hey listen <laughs> I've just been waiting for a reason to do this shit, bro. And I think, I think, I think this is this is the right way, time to do it, right? And we got more shit too as well to release. But for those of you guys who are saying, Duke, why would you do this? Like, dude, this seems kind of vicious of you, bro. This is this is someone that I despise with a fucking with just a passion. Why? Because he's a known liar, he's a known scammer. And after you understand what he's done to other people and the people he's tried to shut down and you know how he went after other people's daddies in this content creator space and the tactics he used to get ahead trust me bro you guys will understand why this guy is the biggest fucking joke in this entire space and realistically not only doesn't deserve a spot but just doesn't belong here in general
traits that I, <laughs> I got from her probably <laughs> genetically, but in terms of watching her operate, one thing about my mother, she, she's not a lettered woman, yeah. uh, you know, not an extraordinary intellect, but she's a very humble individual. And she's the kind of person that if she doesn't know, she's going to ask the question. Mm -hmm. And when she needs to make something happen, she's willing to ask anybody for help and put together a team to get the job done. Helped me a lot in business as a CEO, realizing that you don't have to know how to do everything. Mm -hmm. You have to know how to get everything done. And the last thing a lot of people might, at least YouTube people, might yeah. find, viewers might find me to be abrasive or they might use a term like arrogant, but... And this may be true, mm -hmm. but one thing that I'm always humble about is if you hire me to be your janitor, yeah. I'm going to clean them damn floors. Mm -hmm. You know, it's funny that you said that. If you hire me to be a janitor, I'm going to clean them sales floors. Uh, uh, didn't you also call me a janitor? Right. You called me a janitor saying, oh, this guy who's a YouTuber, nobody. He's probably a janitor. Hey, put that video back up, bro. I don't know why you keep taking on the videos you keep doing, but put that video back up. Oh, you're worried because I might actually, you know, have legal recourse against you because you're falsely accusing me of a job that I don't fucking work in which other people are not perpetuating that same lie. And basically, if you know, YouTube's kind of my brand now, so you're hurting my brand. And I feel like I may have lost something out of it. So that, that, that could be a lawsuit, right? But it's funny how you're claiming that if I was a, if you gave me a mop in a room, I'm gonna sweep it. But on the same breath, you are demonizing blue worker individuals by saying, oh, you're a janitor. You're a low-life janitor. You know, janitors make money too, right? I'm, I'm, I'm just saying, not, not saying I am one. I'm just, I'm just saying that the fact that you would tell me I'm a janitor, which I'm not because I work as an engineer, but you yourself just made this fucking analogy. I think it's very, very telling. Hmm? You heard me? I'm going to clean the hell out them floors. And yeah, I know you in, will. Yes, sir. No, sir. And I'm going to act in the capacity of a servant because I respect hierarchy. And wherever I may fall in a hierarchy, I'm going to play that role. Mm -hmm. And that's a problem a lot of people, especially nowadays, they get outside their mind about Absolutely. where they really stand in life. You <laughs> dig what I'm saying? Absolutely. So I try to keep my feet planted on the ground and, and deal with what's real. Like when I came in your studio, mm -hmm. um, truth be told, I don't ever like to be searched by anybody yeah. but your security guy. I respect the fact that mm -hmm. he's providing security. You yeah. Know? Yeah, hey, whatever you said, do of absolutely. Course. I come in, I want to meet all of your staff. Not that I might ever see them again, or, you <laughs> no, know, or there's any relevance. You definitely will see them again. Though. Yeah, of course. As long as you pay for it, right? You will see them again as long as you pay for it, right? Lord Marguerite, as long as you pay for it, right? Just, just come on. But I came in their space, yeah. you know, and so I always want to conduct myself with that level of respect. And I tell people, when you leave, you know, be a cool breeze to people. Mm -hmm. You know, they should be like, man, I wish that guy was around. That guy was Absolutely. real cool people. So that's how I try to get it in. And at the end of the day, be remarkable. So leave a mark. And if people want to act crazy, leave a scar. Yeah, man. Now, let's actually dive deeper into your background right before let's you go know, ahead and do that. Like I, we uh, so move forward. For this. Now. Grew up in the hood really early on. Did you know, like, yo, I was going to go to John, um, John Hopkins. I was going to, you know, <laughs> dive deep, deeper, you know, uh, into the education. Did you know that education was going to be, like, what takes you out? Look. <laughs> I'm going to keep it a bean with you, yeah. man. Um, when I was – so, one, I, I was fortunate in that, you know, it, science suggests that IQ is pretty much – fixed yeah. right it doesn't really change <laughs> yeah um so I, I was fortunate in that i was blessed with iq and i know this because when i was in the third grade i took a iq test the gifted and talented yeah. education test in california and so i was put into accelerated courses as well when you were in the third grade you took an it I, you, wait 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 you were in the third grade you took an iq text and you found out you were a genius in the third grade does that make any sense to y'all okay so, so I knew that was there. Yeah. But when you're in a broken family and your your family basically are criminals, mm -hmm. unrepentant criminals, yeah. you heard me like, yeah. like, hey, you tried to get a nine to five. Yeah. Um. So that's pretty much all I knew. I, I can't say that I, I knew anyone personally. That I was like, wow, this person's really bright, or mm -hmm. someone who was in a proper professional job where they were yeah. earning well and happy and living well. So I engaged in, in you know crime, um, all the way up until a point where I figured out I was despicable. But yeah. I say that to say this: when I was in high school. Uh, which I would go to inconsistently and late. Um, and I mostly went there to socialize. But yeah. the average black kid in the hood. Yeah, absolutely. That was also hustling his ass off. And then at some point, they have this time where you're high school. All right, tell me, tell me, tell me. So if there's a third grader, which basically means you were probably like, what, 
eight, nine years old, possibly 10. So you found out you were a genius and then skip fucking all the way to high school. And a genius at 10 years old is now getting involved in the life of crime. That's very interesting. Uh, uh, listen, the fact that Qua Flacco didn't have, you know, just follow up questions for this bullshit. <laughs> like, I, I don't know what else to tell you guys, all right? But that's why this channel is here, to expose a lot of that shit, too. Uh, I am Victus. Thank you for the $2 Super Chat. A lot of that shit is appreciated, so thank you guys for giving. He says, do you have backups for all the videos he took down? The only backup I have right now, or a couple of them I have saved on a USB drive, and uh, some of them are still saved on StreamYard. So the problem is I can't up upload them to YouTube because if I do, this loser is going to flag them down. Him or Quasimodo, uh, which is Bridget, all right? Especially the deep dive we did on Bridget because uh, let me tell you this. That shit set him off. Matter of fact, the fact that we did a deep dive into this girl, her high school, her hometown, her parents, her, her brothers, her sisters, right, where they live. This bitch is a fucking alcoholic. Did y'all know that? Did y'all know that Bridget was busted for drunk driving and we exposed the paperwork on that? That video was taken down, right? But this is the same guy that says he doesn't deal with people who drink, smoke, or do any kind of drugs. Meanwhile, your daddy was a coke dealer. And this bitch that you have sitting behind the scenes is the same one that got busted for DUI. And your, oh my God, you want to see? They have a family lawyer that helped them out with all the little legal shit that they end up getting into. Her brother got into some legal shit too that we also exposed in that video. So like, like, when you talk about deep dives, listen, I want y'all to know something. Like, even though, like, our podcast or our show may come off or sound a different way or I may not look like a person that would be able to obtain certain information, do not judge a book by its cover because I do work to find certain things that if it makes sense, we're just going to provide to a lot of people. And this situation was just a big hypocrisy because this guy himself claims he doesn't do drugs or drink. And doesn't associate with people who do drugs or drink. Meanwhile, his assistant had a whole DUI. She was a she got booked for that shit, bro. So just just keep that in mind. So a lot of those videos with those deep dives, we do have those archived in Streamyard. The problem is, if we do end up posting it, they're just gonna get flagged again. And I, I, I and I have been meaning to start a Patreon to do something or, or just another. Another side, the thing is, like, I'm so busy in my actual life because YouTube is not where I make money. I actually, listen, I care about you guys, but YouTube is not where I make money. So I have to focus in the real world, okay? But I, I could post it up there. The problem is, like, I don't have the time to start posting on different platforms just for you guys to see it. I thought about a Patreon, but if you guys have a better idea of how you guys want to digest or see this information without getting my videos flagged or banned, um, help me out and put that in the comment section. I would definitely like to li listen to any kind of uh, 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 responses that you guys have. But we do deep vibes on this shit. This guy's a liar. His whole life is a tire lie. Um, but the ones that were really serious, he did take them down. So it's unfortunate. It. Um, but the only backups I have are on the drive, and the backups I have were on StreamYard. So, uh, again, I could post them again. I just don't know if they get taken down. It is what it is. But um, what? And keep in mind for those of you guys who don't like the longer live streams, this one was in fact three hours. Um, so, it, but I had to get through a lot of information. So if you can stomach that and let me know, put a one in the chat. I can repost it. He can take it down as many times as he wants. I can keep reposting it. Or if you know of any other platform in which people like this don't have the power to take down videos and it can stay up there, I'm open to all ears. Now I know you guys have been telling me do a Patreon or whatever it is. I know I just don't have the time for it. I Listen, listen, YouTube is not the end-all, be-all for me. I got other projects that I'm working on on side of that. Matter of fact, my job itself entails, it's so demanding. Like, I got meetings. I'm booked up with meetings during the weekday, so I, I barely have time to fucking, like, stream or do anything. But I, if you guys have any suggestions, I would love to take advantage of that. But I don't want to, like, you know, do another channel or do another Patreon or anything like that that adds on to more than what I'm already doing right now. And I feel like if I'm going to do a Patreon, I'm going to owe you guys a lot lot more uh, uh content which i don't think i have the time to be ready for and i don't want it to just be a patreon where i'm just talking about this loser all fucking day but if you have any suggestions let me know i'm glad to put out there but this just goes uh this is a part of for the course for channels like ours right where we are the ones in the underground that tell the truth about a lot of these above ground fakers right they get away with all this bullshit but we get struck down we get canceled no one hears who we are because 
guys like this have the YouTube ability to strike us down or get rid of our videos. So if you have any other way of doing it, I am all ears. Um, but oh, I do still have access to those videos and I still have access to those files. Um, and we have actually way more files, including his. I don't want to be. We we got a lot of files on him, his background, his his sisters, his aunties, everything. Like uh, we do when we do deep dives, we really do deep dives. So it's we we don't joke around over here. That that, that, that that's why we're we're where we are for a reason. Um, but I'm just saying that if you guys have another platform, let me know. Counselor comes around, and this is back in the day. So she had this big book with all your grades up to that point. Yeah, and. Uh, she can't, she she would sit outside the classroom. I was in English class and she'd call out each student one by one. Mm -hmm. And then she called me out and you sit down with her and she'll go through your grades and say, these are the collection of universities you can apply to, like the tiers. Yeah. Cal State, UC, private, what have rumble. you. And she opened up the rumble. book and she went to my grades and went across the book with her fingers and then looked at me, a little Asian woman named yeah. Coco. And she said, why do you even come to school? Wow. And I was waiting for her to like proceed with the meeting but for yeah. her it was like over it was like i looked at your grades like yeah. why are you, why do you even show up here yeah she she didn't even have to say like yeah. you know <laughs> no. and so the summary of that was there's no these were her exact words yeah. I, I remember these two sentences verbatim why do you even come to school and number two um there is no college that will take you wow now it was funny because at the time i wasn't thinking about going to college yeah. but i was going through the process everyone else was going through at this time like mm -hmm. come out sit down with her and it was just really bad news and i was like damn and ironically, I'd gotten into a situation at the high school. Um, uh, basically, people were like, have my name and the homie's name. And the homie's a gangster. Yeah. I've never been a gang member. The homie's a gang member. You heard yeah. me? Yeah, an active one, right? Uh -huh. Yeah, real one. So long story short, we had set up a situation and beat the snot out of these people who was running <laughs> their mouth. And I end up in the teacher's lounge. I guess they were talking about, like, this kid Marquette, he, why is he still here? He needs to be kicked out. Yeah. And there was a new teacher that had just came to the school to teach math as a substitute teacher. She mm -hmm. kept hearing the name Marquette, which is a unique name. Yeah. And then I also worked at an after school program as a cover for my mother to say like, this is where I'm getting my money from. Yeah. It was a nice job. I really enjoyed <laughs> it. Yeah, worked at an after school uh, program. Wait, time out. Because you're, you're bouncing around here and you're not giving a whole lot of details. How old are you when you got this job at the after school program, right? And uh, <laughs> why did you have to cover in place of your own mother? Like what, could you explain what's going on here? Because it seems like you're just saying a lot of shit to sound relatable as a broke dude before you made it, right? Which you guys will find out he in fact himself did not make it. This this guy is still as broke as a joke. And if you look at the last videos, we expose his, like we even have his uh, assassin tax ID, which is equivalent to a social security number for a business. And uh, I'm gonna tell you this, YouTube and basically a large e-com, I won't say large, but his website is pretty much an e-commerce platform where he basically sells clothing. That's one. That's literally the only active business he has going for him right now. If you look at anything else under this guy's name, it doesn't exist. Or it had either been dissolved or it doesn't exist. This guy has nothing to his name but his cult following on YouTube, which will buy whatever the fuck he's selling because they're scared of guzzlers himself. Or clothing on his website. So just keep that in mind. And this is why I'm just like, wow, a big, sophisticated platform like No Jumper. Like, who the fuck is your research team? Y'all need to hire our team. Like, my team, <laughs> we'll get you information not a lot of people know. Just, 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 just letting you know. And by the way, there's a lot of information we have on other content creators around this space that a lot of people would like to be privy to that is not really fucking good. So... I don't know where these people get their research from on the people they're inviting to their platforms. But the only reason why I think situations like this is important is when you're trying to influence other people to into a lifestyle that you yourself were never living to begin with. That's where we have to come into play and let y'all know that this is exactly what's happening. Kind of like what CoffeeZilla does with the FTX situation, only it's kind of it's kind of blown up in a lot of people's faces. So. So anyways, uh, I went to the after school program after school and this woman comes over to pick up her kids, black woman. Mm -hmm. And I was raised in part by a Southerner because my mother ended up on crack cocaine. So when she wow. abandoned me, my father was in the pen doing 10. Yeah. Um, I had to go live with my grandmother. Okay. Right. So she's a Southerner. Yes, sir. No, sir. Very polite. So when this woman came to pick up her kids, I said, um, hi, Marquette. Nice to meet you. And she says, oh, Marquette, I heard about you. I said, yeah, I'm a yeah. legend out here. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, wow. In high school? You're a legend in high school. OK, buddy. All right, like buddy. Like, Seven. Your boy was a nut, bro. Seven. I was like, yeah, I'm a legend out here. And yeah. she was like, no, they were talking about you in the teacher's lounge. And one teacher was saying, you're the dumbest kid she's ever had in her class. Wow. I believe it. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? It's wow. crazy. And she was like, in another That's teacher. Yeah, yeah. And, the, and another teacher was saying, you're the smartest kid in the state mm -hmm. based on your scores. Yeah. 
Um, she says, you know what? I can help you. I say, yeah, I'm not looking for help. Yeah. She's like, no, you need help though. She was like, yeah, my daughter, I'm not going to say the girl's name, so my daughter yeah. so-and-so goes to Mayfield, which was like a all, I don't know if it's all girls or co-ed, but a very well-to-do private school. Yeah. She's really smart, and she's going to take the high school exit exam. Mm -hmm. If you're as smart as they say you are, you should be able to take it and pass no problem. Yeah. And in my head, I'm like, shorty, like, ain't nobody, <laughs> <laughs> who are you? I don't even right. know you. I know. I said it Grace Nelda, but yeah. <laughs> and then so she literally said, give me your number. I was like, no, nah, I'm good. Yeah. She's like, give me your number. I was like, ma'am, I, I don't even know you. She was yeah. like, I'm not going to leave till you give me your number. And I'm gonna have you take this exam yep. and you're gonna get out of this school because this school is bad for you mm. or you're bad for this school. Mm -hmm. Long story short, I ended up uh, taking the high school uh, proficiency exam, which was funny because her daughter didn't pass. Wow. I passed, but her daughter didn't pass, which is <laughs> funny, but you know, that's how it happened. Pretty so, expected though, right? Privileged kids usually, usually like, like, you know. I didn't really know any yeah. privileged kids. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, time out. You know what's funny? Because this is the same loser that said that he went to community college before uh, while he was still in high school, right? I think it was he was at his sophomore or junior year. So where is you see how he's not giving you proper dates and time frames of where this story is taking place? So all of a sudden, like your your teacher says, Well, give me this number and I'm gonna make sure you take a placement test for another school. Okay, when did you graduate early to go to community college? Because from your story and your standpoint, it seems like you had the exact same role that every average fucking student student fucking had right in this case you claim that you were hanging out or moving with gangbangers but to be honest with you the fact says that you were a good boy <laughs> okay so stop lying marquette uh second of all when did you have the time to be a community college graduate or uh, attend community college to even begin with during uh leaving high school early right when was that happening i, I th there's so many questions it's not even funny and one of the biggest pressing questions of them all is in between that time from when in fact were you a pimp who did you pimp out? Because you talked about your bad boy days where you were hanging out with gangsters and, you know, getting into trouble. But it didn't seem like you talked about your pimping phase during that stage. Matter of fact, even watching this whole podcast, you never talked about your pimping phase at all. Yet you're still claiming that you're a pimp, even using the same terminology in the same sentence five minutes ago. So I like how you're omitting from certain facts that you sell to your bullshit audience that guzzle that shit up because they're all skittle guzzlers to begin with. Like, just let us know what the fuck's going on, Marquette, because there's some holes that realistically, if you would debate someone like me, we'd poke holes in. But let's just be real. You had me banned since the first question I asked about Fletch App. Guys, if you guys don't know, I was banned from his channel. That was the only reason why I was able to expose him because my thing was I was planning on going on his channel to just ask the questions about Fletch App and like, what was going on with these companies that went under and where did the company sold? I even saw information about the Why Not app that he had. And I had questions about that too, because he said he sold that for hundreds of millions of dollars. And there's no evidence proving that Why Not actually made or went anywhere. It was it actually, realistically, we have evidence to prove that Why Not was a dissolved company. All right. But you'll see how he tries to explain how Why Not just seemingly disappeared from the public eye and no one else talks about it, but he made a lot of money from it. And when Flacco asked how much his net worth were, was, you understand how he answers that question. And when you listen to how he answers that question, you really understand the fraud that this guy's perpetuating. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. Honestly, um, you know, I was just a kid from the hood. Right? Yeah, I What's good to HPP? And subscribe to his channel. It. And I was also shocked when I passed. Yeah. Because at that, based on your experience in life up to then, mm -hmm. though I might have had higher IQ than my peers, I was still there with them in the ghetto. Yeah. I was still going through the same things, committing the same crimes, Perfect having the riches. same life experience. I viewed myself as the same. Yeah. And I was probably worse than most of them, truth be told. Mm -hmm. So anyways, um, I learned a new world and, uh, you know, I was off to the races. Man, yo, like, because like, we're like the opposite, right? So so like I was the kid where my parents also like uh, a proposition to school to have me take the IQ test, right? Because okay. I was somebody who got great grades. I'm, okay. I'm talking about great grades, right? But they, like, they sort of equated... A, a kid who tried hard and overachieved to intelligence. You're diligent. Yeah. yeah. So when I took it, though, guess my score? <laughs> a 95, right? So Because you a dummy. <laughs> you don't take a genius to see that. Right? But uh, uh, I think the cutoff was like uh, 125 for like the <laughs> gift program, which yeah. I did not make it, right? But like, I always say this, though, right? Mm -hmm. If God made me about 15 to 20 IQs higher, mm -hmm. I would have been a dropout. Mm -hmm. I would right because it gets boring once you know too much, right? Like, if I know a lot, mm -hmm. if I know that I'm just smarter than everybody else, how do I go to class and have a stupid ass teacher teach me something, right? S right, like, like so for you, it's kind of like damn, like that's actually like a really big deal that you actually like 
say, you know what, bro, I'm putting this shit on pause. I'm going to now try hard because high IQ, most people with high IQ don't really have a strong work ethic because things just come easy. But once they do, I guess, grow that strong work ethic, they end up like you, man, where now you're like just just like just killing shit, right? Now That's fucking cap. I'm just saying. No, that, that, that's cap to the nth degree. All right, because people with high IQ have very, very obsessive personalities, especially about certain things. All right. And they may not find things like school or anything like that important or, you know, really, you know, a big, intricate piece to their life. But there are other things that people with high IQ obsess over. And it doesn't have to be monetarily speaking. But trust me, they do work, whatever it is that they're obsessed over. It's just that school is not something that they are. They really just end up gravitating to because school is all about teaching you how to conform to society so that when you graduate, you become a perfect plug and fit to whatever corporation you decide to get placed at. But realistically, people with high IQs are the ones who start enterprises, build enterprises and run enterprises that are worth billions of dollars. And it's provable. Uh, unlike the IQ guy you're talking about here, who there's no proof of any kind of money that he made. The only proof that we have is all of his companies dissolving and the businesses who funded him going bankrupt. Now, once you I guess like went like passed through, you know, like like uh, like through Berkeley, John Hopkins. Sure. Now, when did you say, well, first off, what was the first company you started before content creating? Oh, this is Shoot, interesting. Bro, I've I've done a lot. And one thing I always remind yeah. people of is that. You only got to win one time. Absolutely. <laughs> you, feel me? you only got to win one time. You heard Absolutely. Me? One hit. Yeah. I got a lot I can name, but my the first biz, like legitimate business that I did that had the potential to yeah. pass the million dollar mark yeah. um, was a company called Hobby Buddy. It was a tech company. Mm. But I didn't know anything. Yeah. I took a political science degree at Berkeley. I took a degree in education with a focus on instructional uh, technology uh, at yeah. Johns Hopkins University. So I didn't really know much in general, mm -hmm. right? And so I created this company, which for consumer facing consumers really liked it. Mm -hmm. Investors wouldn't back it one in part because I didn't have the proper background. Yeah. And most importantly, I didn't have a proper business model. Mm -hmm. Revenue model wasn't there. The dollars weren't coming in. Yeah. Investors will invest in you no matter what color you are, yeah, as absolutely. long as you can turn things green. Absolutely. So I learned a lot. And that was like taking an MBA. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people ask me, my question, I go back to university, get a business degree or do X, Y, and Z. I'm like, no, mm -hmm. they let me give lectures at top MBA programs, yeah. Chicago booth. All that, yeah, I've been there. I've given lectures there, and I don't have an MBA. Yeah, because most of what you're learning there, you're doing case studies on Fortune 500 companies. <laughs> yeah, right. Like, yeah, you're learning how to be a good C-suite employee, <laughs> uh, a worker. Yeah, precisely. So Hobby Buddy was my favorite first company because it was started from joy and passion. Mm -hmm. I was sophomoric, and it was a great education. Mm -hmm. And um, and from there, man, you know, we we got it going. Yo, yeah. let's. Oh uh, yeah, uh, guys, want to know what Hobby Buddy is? There's fucking hubby buddy here. This is this app is basically you paying to hang out with somebody else to do sports. <laughs> That's literally all this shit is. It's nothing special. It didn't make millions of dollars. It's nothing. You're paying 45 bucks a month to hang out with somebody. And I don't know about y'all, but hey, listen, you couldn't even pay me to come see a like a random YouTuber. <laughs> you couldn't pay me to come see a celebrity. But the fact of the matter is. You started an application that supposedly started you off on a path to making millions called Hubby Buddy. And all it is a glorified app for you to do activities with other people. It's not even an app, people. It's just a website. And you know what this website is? For those of you guys who understand, like, you know, portfolios and, like, technology, right? Unlike this technologist over here. What this site is, it's not really, like, a functioning site where you can actually go ahead and, like, pay and do things i'm sure people try probably try to sign up but let's let's face it this this site isn't getting the traffic that you think it's getting right but realistically what it, it, it's it, it's meant to do is to showcase uh, uh a potential de uh, developer's work not saying that this guy himself is a developer you heard of him saying his help he's a political science major okay so he got nothing to get with with uh, in terms of tech but it's one of those things where you can you can hire somebody do a wordpress website which exactly which is exactly what this is this is wordpress um you do a wordpress website okay you could pay some guy on fiverr to do it and voila you got yourself a a, a, a seemingly working website that you can prove that is some, uh, as part of your portfolio that you're some kind of like you know technologist or whatever the fuck you is but realistically it's just a portfolio piece this this all of this it's 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 just portfolio even even the way the website is structured i can tell you this right just from a marketing standpoint right off the bat people are gonna click off as soon as they hit this area right here 
the texts are barely readable. It's very small print. The, it, like it, it's hard to really find anything to click on the to really pay, right? So first things first, on your web page, if you're gonna design something as an entrepreneur that you want people to pay, you need a call to action button like immediately on the front page of your website. So that way you're making money. You're directing people to exactly where you need to get them. I don't see a call to action anywhere on your first page. I just see view hobbies, sports, all ages. What about sign up now or get started? Where's that button? That's the first thing, even me. I, listen, I know a little bit about web development, but like realistically, I'm not saying I'm a web development genius or anything like that. At least I would tell you that, hey, I would put a fat ass contact us now or call to action button in this little space right over here before anyone else even gets further in your site because realistically the reason why i know this site's not making money is because a motherfucker gotta scroll through to even figure out where the fuck they gotta buy all right they gotta get down and even this button's about testimonials you have a testimonial button before you have somebody clicking on where to buy now or get started with your product what that tells me is you don't understand business at all. And this is just a portfolio website because realistically, you want to understand how people you want you understand how people surf the web. A lot of people, when they surf the web, they don't look at anything bottom line. Like anything below the bottom line of your web page, people don't scroll that far to look at it. You understand that, right? I mean, for those of you guys who ever ran web pages before or, or ran an e-commerce store or even ran a blog site, you understand to get people to click, you better have a big fat call to action button right here. This website's not making money. It never did. It was just an awful portfolio. So as these guys go to wrong telling you lies, I'm just going to be here just kind of poking holes in a lot of it. Let's continue. So, talk that ish, man. Yeah. What company made you the first level of some type of wealth? The first one is a little known company. Yeah. And what people don't realize is when you, A, you're dealing with private companies yeah. and B, you're dealing with acquisitions. Yes. Often these things are not talked about in the public for good reason. Sometimes an acquiring company will buy your company to kill it. Yeah. Sometimes they'll buy it to innovate within their company, but mm -hmm. sometimes they buy it to kill it. Long story short, um, I, I, at the same time, and there's a guy with a genius IQ who he was asked, well, what do you do when you have two good opportunities and you can't tell which way to go with a fork in the road? Yeah. He said, go down both sides. Mm. So I'm running a company that at the time had been renamed to Fletch, which was doing really well for me. Yeah. Taking me around the world, doing yeah. really well for me. Then I had an idea, which I thought was a stroke of genius, because when I was in South Korea, I went to South Korea to open an office in Pongyo. Yeah. And so and doing a lot of other things there. It was lovely. Yeah. I had the finest uh, uh, Korean teacher you ever wanted to see. <laughs> you heard me? Oh, Lord, geez, I'm still, I'm still mad about Fine it. as hell, probably. Lord. Yeah. But anyways, when I was there, I realized, one, that Americans – don't have the fastest internet in the world. Mm -hmm. Americans are overpaying for their internet. Absolutely. You know, we're talking about our broadband, DSL, cable internet, all that stuff. We're overpaying. We don't have the fastest internet. How does, uh, how does that work out? That's yeah. unexpected. Mm -hmm. We're the most powerful, wealthiest country in the world. Uh, I was like, okay. So we have high prices. That means that there's a, oh, when yeah. you, seg you do customer segmentation, yeah. there are yeah. portions of the market that can't afford high speed internet mm -hmm. or yeah. don't want to afford high speed internet. Yeah. Yeah. And so I was thinking like how many of these customer segments are left in the dark, but it's a significant pool of money that can be accessed. Yeah. yeah. So for example, say you're looking at a Comcast cable, their, their beginner internet package says like 40 bucks yeah. a month. Yeah. Well, a low income family might be able to afford 20 bucks a month. Absolutely. And where do they live? They live in apartments generally, yeah. right? Tenements. Yeah. So yeah. Sure hey, 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 Flacco, you don't have to say yeah after every fucking sentence, bro. <laughs> Just let the nigga talk and get off his meat, bro. What I did was this because I currently was the CEO of a thriving technology company. Absolutely. And guys, the thriving technology he's talking about is Fletch App. And let me just show you how thriving Fletch App was. <laughs> Once you realize how thriving it was, you realize it wasn't really as thriving as you thought, okay? Um, here's uh the Rocket Reach profile for Fletch App, okay? And Fletch App realistically on the surface never really made more uh than two hundred and fifty thousand dollars let's see if i can find put up real quick while i pull this over here i'm gonna let him i'm gonna let him talk for a little bit oh that's gabe by the way if you guys want to say hi to gabe um but i'm gonna i'm gonna go ahead and With pull up this format and real quick hold investors up. and some of which are invest are founders of some of the biggest tech companies in the world mm. which i know you've personally used everyone in this room has yeah. um but you cannot say, okay, I'm the CEO of this company. Yeah. I'm also going to found another company and be CEO of that company yeah. at the same time. Absolutely. Your investors are going to get mad. They're going to get shaky. Yeah. Unless maybe you're Elon Musk. That's a whole different level. Yeah. But what I did was I had a girlfriend I was saying at the time, a little, uh, aunt, like she grew up Mennonite, if you know what that is. It's yeah. a very religious Christian. She grew up like in rural Pennsylvania God damn. around the Amish. Amish, and, wow. Yeah. Yeah. So she was like super off the grid, simple, good girl. Yeah. Sure. 
follow directions too. Here, yeah. So the direction was, I was like, sure, do we plan Simon Says, guess who Simon is? <laughs> yeah. Uh, here go to plan in the script. <laughs> yeah. Follow it. So so I said, look, um, I'm gonna start this company. You're going to be the CEO. Oh wow. I'll be the CTO. Yeah. And you'll be the top line person. I'll be the bottom line yeah. person. I'll be in the shadows, but I'll do everything every now and then. I need you to go give a pitch or yeah. you know X, Y, and Z. But I'm gonna get all the business done. Yeah. Absolutely. I also had before that opened an office for my tech company Fletch mm -hmm. in Northern Michigan in a yachting community. Yeah. I met a good guy over there who's very cash liquid. Yeah. So I put some cash in, he put some cash in. We then went to New York, oh, deployed wow. this technology. It was called Why Not, W I. Oh, hold on, let me, let me finish this. Yeah. Why Not. I'm, I'm glad he finally said that with his own fucking mouth, okay? Uh, yeah, Why Not is what he's claiming, guys, that it made him a mi millions of dollars, right? Because he, you know, whatever it is. Um, and when we find out it, it wasn't the case because Fletch app itself, it got nothing more than $250,000. Now, if you guys actually really look at it, he basically states that, uh, he made a bunch of, it, Fletch app was a, the app that changed his life. Hang on one second. I'm, I'm, I'm pulling it up right now. Give me one second. Um, he's saying that Fletch app was the, was the app that say that, that took him around the world or whatever he likes to spin to his audience. But realistically, it's not the case. He got a significant investment of $250,000 from three different operations. All right. And one of them, which is the guy he's talking about, was it cool house lab? I keep calling it Schoolhouse Labs, but it's Cool House Labs. They're out of business. They went bankrupt. The last investment of 50 grand they gave was to this motherfucker's company, and they were gone. Okay. There was no evidence that this company sold. I'm, I'm pulling up the details right now. Um, there's no evidence this company sold. Uh, none of that. Uh, he claims that that was his claim to fame. That was what got him, you know, successful and whatnot. It, it just was not the case. All right. You had a, comp a, a company that had two employees, right? One of them was a guy named Adida Helan, which is a, he's a serial entrepreneur. And what he does is he goes around and, and starts these different tech companies, but they're not really tech companies. He usually just, it's kind of like a nice little pump and dump. And pump and dump is something that Lauren Marquardt is very, very used to. So um, let me pull this up real quick. Give me one second here. I got to I gotta grab I got to grab this information. Hang on one second, guys. I got to grab some of this information. Um, I don't need the profile. I need the company info. Hang on one second, people. Hang on one second. I'm sorry, guys. Give me one second. I'm going to let this play here for a second. And the idea is like, why not share your Wi-Fi? Yeah. Right? So you can share your Wi-Fi with your neighbor in the next door oh, apartment. Wow. Right? Oh, okay. So what I was allowing you to do, if you're paying 40 bucks a month for yeah. internet, now you're paying 20 because this person is paying you monthly and we're handling the billing. Yeah. So it's like a recurring amount of money sent to you and we just take our small cut. Yeah. Two, three dollars. Yeah. We get the whole building. We got 200 people doing it. We're spending that around monthly recurring revenue. Yeah. And guess how much infrastructure we needed? Almost none. We're none. just a payment processing platform, yeah, essentially. Um, I'm not going to name any names, but there are a lot of large telco companies in South Korea where they have superior internet, yeah. um, which makes it better for sharing. Mm -hmm. And they also are into tenement living in South Korea. They don't have single family detached yeah. in Seoul, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So this is perfect for that environment. Yeah. So long story short, there, there's a large telco company that's, hey, I like what you're doing. Mm -hmm. um, here's the number. We can talk about it, but not for long. Yeah. That's the number? Shit, here, take it, man. <laughs> Throw 20% on top of it. Yeah. We, we call it a day. You take, you take Shut the fuck up. Uh, he's basically saying that why not basically sold for millions of dollars, and that's how he became rich, right? I'm going to expose why not in just a second, gang, all right? Y'all got to give me a second because I just got to let y'all know what the crap Fletch app is. This is the company he says that took him around the world. Fletch app took him around the world. How do you go around the world with $250,000 in total funding? Shut the fuck up, bro. We know that's cap, okay? This is a total funding, and when you look at the different kind of companies, these are the total investments he's gotten. And he didn't even leave the seed round funding stage, okay? They didn't even leave funding stage phase one, okay? They got 250 bands three different times, or not three different times, uh, from three different uh, uh, operations or companies, and the company went under. There's no if, ads, or buts about it. There's no there's no record of this company being sold. There's no record of this company transferring or, or being even transferred from a different company or anything like that. 
this was something that he started and ideally arguably this was this his most successful venture yet the two hundred fifty thousand dollars he got from three total rounds of investments okay does not equate to millions of dollars that he's claiming he received from uh you know the sale or the success of the company for you guys got to understand them understand something fletch app was never was never successful ever okay first of all if you look at the business model of fletch app itself it's structured in a way where it's not meant to be successful we actually played a video of lord marquad when he went up to a group of an uh, pretty much uh, uh to pitch his uh business to a group of uh investors they weren't investors but they were promoting his uh his they were going to promote his company out there and the guy that was asking him a question was basically like yo i don't see this company actually making money all right because you're 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 you're, you're saying all this stuff but you you're you're not even first of all you you guys aren't even in place to be you know you 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 almost set up to be like a charity. That's literally the fucking word the guy used word for word, and he know himself that Fletch app is not something that's that's meant for you to be making money or it's gonna even hit targets whatsoever. As much as Laura Marquard tried to sell it as that, it just wasn't the case. Okay, so this is the total amount of funding that he got, and these are the name of the companies that funded him. All right, and let me go into this real fucking quick. One, one of them you see here is Art Grants, okay? Art Grants is a pretty massive investment firm that is kind of not in profit, but they reside in St. Louis, Missouri. And one thing you mentioned that you, you see that Lord Marquardt mentions a lot is, I have offices in St. Louis. I got offices in Chicago. I got offices all over the world. But those offices weren't really his offices. They were literally pretty much areas where these guys were allowing him to set up shop and work out of in order for him to receive those fundings that were they were gonna give him so they weren't his office as in he was going out of pocket and spending money on that because before this he didn't have money and he had a total of two hundred fifty thousand dollars. so it's just not the case okay our grants was their lead investor that tells me that they gave them a shit ton of money right and they only had a seven seven total exits and for those of you guys don't know what exit means in the corporate speak an exit basically means hey i've either sold this company or this company went public and now i'm able to get exit from the deal and make profit one way or the other and if you look at the exits which we're going to uh look at here in just a second uh you'd realize that and it's down here you realize that there's moon noonlight there's label inside disruptel patel analysis and observer uh, observable networks um fletch app was not part of this fletch app was not part of their exit strategy fletch app was not even part of any of these guys exit strategy now one of the main guys he was talking about which was a cool guy with deep pockets who also had an office in the midwest that he likes to brag about was this guy named jordan Beringer. All right, or bringer, or whatever you want to call it, right? He was a founder of what's called school, or I call it schoolhouse lab, but it's cool house labs, okay? And essentially, he gave Lord Marquardt a shit ton of money for his bullshit Fletch app idea, and his company ended up going bankrupt. Now, I'm not saying that Lord Marquardt was the biggest reason that he went bankrupt, but what I am saying is that Lord Marquardt Fletch app company was the last money that this guy gave to before they went out of business okay and it was pretty sad and he even did a whole thing on um uh twitter not twitter but uh, uh he had a blog post about that basically describing what's going on and then here's uh impact engine was a third investor so he's talking about how this this business took him around the world it didn't he took the money from the investors and traveled around the world as a glorified salesman to be able to go around and try to get more money but the problem is aside from these three idiots that decided to invest into these companies realizing that it wasn't a fucking money-making scheme to begin with because they, they're not going to make money out of fletch app right a lot of other companies outside of this country that weren't dumb and were able to see the writing on the wall were able to say hey listen bro you're not going to be making money with this this is not a money-making opportunity i'm sorry we do not want to invest right and with that being said he didn't make any more money outside of that nor did this company sell because if this company sold 
this guy wouldn't be out of business. I'm more inclined to say that you put him out of business, Lord Marquardt. I'm more inclined to say that. But uh, then he also saw, talks about something called Why Not app. And for those of you guys who don't know, Why Not is an internet Wi-Fi sharing app. Now, here's a crazy thing that you guys got to understand. Um, I don't need to be a technologist to let you know how bad of an idea that is to share your Wi-Fi with just about anybody okay first of all i even looked into it at least i tried to look into it good luck try to find any information about that it's not there at least any relevant information right about the application and there's no protection in place whatsoever to protect people's information while sharing their wi-fi network with other people need i to say more that if you have someone with certain technical expertise like me or someone else I think it's safe to say in hindsight 2020 why you don't want any random person just getting access to your Wi-Fi network because it could be bad news for you, whoever you are, whatever the fuck you're doing, right? So that in itself was a horrible idea to begin with, and that idea never really went anywhere. Now, the one thing that it did go was the fact that he was able to pay, again, he was able to pay a, fi- a Forbes article contributor to get on Forbes. Now, for those that don't know, you can hire someone on Fiverr to do this, okay? Matter of fact, this shit's so crazy. This Hillary girl, we have to do a deep dive on her, and it's uh, like we, we got information on her. She's not that great. Uh, but what she does is she's a former contributor, meaning a contributor is someone who would write an article for Forbes to kind of fill up their content space, but they're not actually a, a, a editor or a writer for Forbes. They're not a they're not a writer. They're not someone that Forbes will say, hey, the words of this particular person over here is the is what Forbes actually endorses. Matter of fact, it says that right here in this little asterisk right here. If you guys can see that it says the opinions expressed by expressed by Forbes contributors are their own, meaning it has nothing to do with Forbes at all. Right, but you're gonna see here in just a second how this guy brags about I'm on Forbes. Were you on Forbes? You weren't on Forbes. I was on Forbes, nigga. Anybody can pay to get on Hillary's bucket list to get that shit taken care of. And on top of that, he was right, right? Uh, this little lady over here named Miriam Martin, this Mennonite chick from a bumfuck, whatever the fuck they want to call it, area that he decided to use to be the chief technology officer, right? Who wasn't actually a coder. She didn't code the app or anything like that, or if there actually was an app to begin with, right? She didn't do any of that. She was just some bumfuck chick who was from a Mennonite community, and, you know, he just put her as a figurehead of a corporation. Now, you would ask, well, where the fuck did he find this chick? Oh, wait. She was also an employee for Fletch, okay? So, you know what this guy just said? Well, if you're a CEO of one company, your investors definitely don't want you, you know, working as a CEO of another company because that's going to cause some, you know, rift and, you know, they don't want to give you money. Okay, what does that say about somebody who's a CEO of this company but also works at Fletch app? Actively. Who the fuck do you think you're lying to, bro? You're lying to people right now. So, if... You were a CEO. First of all, that's cap because there are multiple CEOs out there that would literally have multiple different uh, side projects of and businesses that they're that they're invested in or they're involved in in leading. And not only that, there are active CEOs right now that are working for companies that are also on the board for other major multinational corporations. Okay, so what he's saying about hey, well, uh, 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 a true uh, uh, the, my investors didn't want me to work on another company because uh, I was a CEO of Fletch App. What he doesn't realize is like, bro. Uh, your girl from this bumfuck Mennonite community was also an employee for Fletch App. And then you put her as a CEO. What would your investors have to say about that? Oh, that's right, because you, they went out of business and they never made money from you. And you were able to get out of them getting their money back from you because you put her as a CEO of a corporation that wasn't really meant to begin with. You scammed your investors and they went out of business and nobody checked you on it. For the longest time, you were able to get on the space and brag to everybody else how great of a technology you are, but you are a scammer. And you played musical chairs with employees and other people's money. Do you understand that this man invested $50,000 in you and you scammed him and he's out of business? Imagine that. Imagine that. 
come to find out this guy's playing musical chairs with employees just to make a buck? See, those don't sound like skills of somebody who's IQ or high IQ, right? It sounds like uh, uh, the, 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 the mentality of somebody who's broke and is just scheming, wheeling, and dealing to get ahead. So you got this girl over here, uh, Miriam Martin, who is supposed to be the CEO or the app developer of Why Not. Okay, that's interesting because then are you looking to Why Not? First of all, good luck finding any information on it because it doesn't exist. And I could tell you why. The reason why it doesn't exist is because the marketing strategy was piss poor. It wasn't to the same level of Fletch app, and he knows it, right? And if you don't want, if you want proof, uh, how could a company – that sold for millions of dollars. Now, mind you, he's claiming on this interview, this uh, this uh, Vlad interview, he's claiming that why not was the application that made him a hundred million dollars. That's what he's insinuating. Because listen, if he if he were to open his mouth and said Fletch app made him a hundred million dollars, we can already prove that that's bullshit. All right, we have the proof to show that that's bullshit. Right, so he can't use Fletch because the public record's out there. But why not is ambiguous, ambiguous and mysterious enough where he can come up with a backstory saying it was bought out by a bigger Korean company. That's why you don't hear anything about it, which is cap, because any public or private company that has a board of directors will always have what's called a, a letter written to the shareholders about any move that they're making. So if there's an acquisition or potential acquisition that's coming up, well, guess what? There's going to be a letter or some kind of like info email that's going to be letting the shareholders know what's going on. So either way, there's a paper trail. Good luck finding that because it doesn't exist. He's lying about that. There's no paper trail showing this company sold. But what he's trying to use is that, hey, because you don't hear about it anymore because it was on Forbes and now you don't hear it, it's because it's sold and the company dissolved it. That's not the case. Because even if the moment that company is bought or even if the CEO is thinking about buying that company, the shareholders are going to get know about it. They have to know about it. So the fact that he was able to try to hide Fletch App, or not Fletch App, why not under this obscure lie, was very, very telling. But if you want to know how well Fletch App, or not Fletch App, why not did, here it is right here. Uh, six years ago, this is this is why not app. It had a total of uh, thirty five views on their YouTube channel. Matter of fact, hold up, nigga, am I the only like you've had since the last video we did? Hold up, let me show y'all something. This is why not app, right? This is the why not app, the app that he's talking about, right? And uh, those of you guys who don't know who Gabe is, uh, let me just remind you who this guy is real fucking quick because he sounds really fucking familiar. Oh wait. <laughs> Gabe also worked for Fletch. So if you don't believe that this guy was playing musical chairs with his own employees to fool other investors to scam him, to scam them, you're delusional. So is Flacco. You're delusional because you didn't do your research on this clown. Any, any, any third grade research would know that this guy's a fraud. Why not didn't sell for shit? Why not didn't, wasn't successful? Do you know why? Because why not? It's not a profitable business venture. Any fucking wise ass will tell you that. Why would you want to start a business where it involves sharing your personal Wi-Fi information? Listen, if I can hack a guy like you, Lord Marquard, do you know how easy it is for me to hack somebody by them just willingly giving me their Wi-Fi information? Like, do you understand that? Not only can I just see what's going on within the situation or whatever computer they're connected to, I can look at every other device that's connected to that particular network. Do you understand that? Do you understand the security risks that involve in an application like this? And you understand why it's not going to go anywhere, right? So let's listen to Gabe for a little bit. But I'm going to let y'all know, I am the only like that this channel has gotten in six years. You want to you want me to prove it? Watch. I unlike that bitch. It's zero likes. But this is a company that sold for millions of dollars? Do you guys honestly believe that? The, the the company that sold for millions of dollars, meaning the first like they ever got on their YouTube channel, was a nigga that is exposing them. And I'm just trying to support, right? I'm showing y'all a little support. There's your like right there. I'll leave it there because y'all want to call me a hater. Listen, I support the brothers out here. But then he also said something that was very important, right? He said that this chick over here, middle of bumfuck nowhere, was the CEO, Miriam Martin, right? The chick that also worked at Fletch App, okay? Then was the company sold to Gabe? 
Hi, my name is Gabe Owens, and I'm CEO and co-founder of Why Not. I'm currently a student here at Washington University in St. Louis, where I'm majoring in leadership and strategic management, as well as entrepreneurship. And you notice that the St. Louis pops up a lot, right? And the reason why St. Louis pops up a lot is because one of their main investors, Art Grant, they're located in St. Louis. This guy doesn't own offices. He's leeching off of other people. You understand that? So just keep that in mind. Uh, but what happened to Miriam? Why, why, why was she replaced as a CEO with, with, with someone like Gabe? Why is it that a company that supposedly sold for millions of dollars that made you a hundred millionaire? Why does it only have 35 views? And the only like it gave was the one that I gave you basically exposing this shit. But Flacco didn't do his research. No jumper don't do their research. They would much rather promote scammers to their audience than do their own research on who they're bringing on. Again, I'm not saying that no jumper willingly invited this guy because we all know he paid for it. And we're looking into that. But you paid for it because that's the only way they're going to bypass this bullshit like this. Right? If you don't believe me, why not had all of two videos on their YouTube channel? They don't even have a single subscriber. Here's the other one. Here's the other one right over here. I saw here. a woman one night outside of a closed McDonald's at 11 o'clock. Cell phone in one arm, baby in the other. And I couldn't help but ask, hey, is everything okay? And she responded, yeah, it's fine. I'm just using the Wi-Fi. There are over 60 million Americans living like this woman with no home internet, largely due to the fact that we have some of the highest internet costs in the world. My name is Gabe Owens, and I am CEO and co-founder of Why Not? a marketplace that is empowering neighbors to share their Wi-Fi. Wana is a map-based web application that allows you to subscribe to your neighbor's Wi-Fi for a mere $20 a month. Now, we'll be taking about a $4 commission from each user each month. Forbes even wrote an article on our highly successful beta test that we launched with 100 users in New York. Why not help your neighbor share your Wi-Fi and make a few extra bucks? So there's a story about in a Forbes article. It's not, it wasn't even about him like he claims it is. It was a paid article that was about a beta test that really there's really no proof of, right? They're claiming it was highly successful via a hundred users, but mm, there's no there's no there's no record of any mass applications, any mass, you know adoption for the application. And realistically, there was no explanation from when from when uh Miriam, this chick over here, stopped being the CEO and Gabe took over. Oh, that's right. Uh, if you guys didn't want to know, Gabe also worked at Fletch. Do you see the musical chairs this loser's playing with other people's money? Do you understand that? He thought he can have the exact same success he got with Fletch app if he just transferred all of his bullshit to why not. And the reason why why not was a thing wasn't because, you know, it was a successful thing he started and it took off. No, it's because Fletch app was dying. It died September. It's it, 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 uh, what, what is it? No, no. Uh, June 21st of 2016 was their last round it got. The, uh, uh, the few months later, they went bankrupt. They were done. They were gone. And right after that, while this company was going under, Lord Marquardt pops up with Fletch app. He pops up with Fletch app, but he didn't want to be the CEO. He didn't want to be the he didn't want to be a leader or everything like that. He would much rather have his cronies do the dirty work because that way the two hundred thousand dollars that was missing from his initial investment from all these other companies here, he was able to keep the investors in bay. They weren't tripping. Oh, by the way, we're missing one more person who was also involved in all this scheme, but is still with this man today. And that's this bitch over here, Bridget. Oh, yes, Bridget. Hey, baby, how you doing? I love that sexy ass voice of yours, too. It's, it's pretty cute. It just doesn't match your face, but I still love it, by the way. You can call me daddy any fucking day, because after I'm done sunning this motherfucker over here, <laughs> you won't have no fucking choice. But she was also part of the scheme. She was heavily invested in his Fletch app. Even when they robbed their own investors blind. She was invested in that. And she's still with him today. 
That's why all the videos we put out about this. And guys, this is just clips notes. If you guys want to go in depth, detail, deep dive, check out our last couple of videos because we played a lot of situations. I really don't want this video to be more than an hour or an hour and a half or an hour and 45 minutes. But I'm letting y'all know right now this guy is cap. And when Destiny said that this guy was a scammer, he's not lying. He is a scammer. He plays musical musical chairs with his own employees from Fletch App, from a company that went under. And tried to play the same game with Why Not, but it doesn't work because, nigga, I'm one of three likes that you ever got. And the only comment you have is somebody who couldn't even find the app. Hey, listen, bro, you're not alone. We can find the app anywhere either. Why? Because it doesn't exist. No Korean company bought it. It never went anywhere. It was dissolved because it, it, it wasn't a viable way of making money. But this guy, for some reason, is allowed to go on a podcast with some guy named Flacco, and he can't even do his own research? Y'all out here promoting scammers on No Jumper now? Really? Really? Really, Adam? Is this what we're doing now? We're promoting scammers and we're just letting them go off all free? Listen, I would forgive the fact that y'all would promote a scammer. That's fine. But the fact that you let him get away with the, the pimp-ism and you don't have my boy Sharp coming up here and at least checking him on the isms, right? Making sure he knows step by step what the isms are. I am highly disappointed. Highly disappointed. But one thing that would make everything right is if Lord Marquardt can come out with a video as soon as possible, helping us understand how we can uh, uh, create an NFT from the command line. I would definitely love to know that. Take everything. You take <laughs> yeah. everything. You want this jacket? You take everything. <laughs> take it all, man. Um, so you know, did that deal, and you know, before we finished the deal, actually, Forbes ended up doing an article on yeah. the technology when we did our first deployment in New York. Yeah. And so we were getting popping. We closed the deal real quick, and then lights went out on everything. That's yeah. why you don't hear about it after that. Yeah, of course, absolutely. And so it's always funny to me on the internet when you hear people say like, "Oh, you know, so and so's not this, or he yeah. ain't done that." I'm like, how many of your internet gurus who are teaching yeah. you? How many were in Forbes? Like that's, that, true. that's not a blog, my boy. Like yeah. that's Really, is that your is that your response to the critics that say you because I'm the guy, we're, we're the guys, we in this particular stream right now are letting him know that your company is fake and we got the receipts to prove it. And his only rebuttal is like, Were you in Forbes? I was in Forbes. Were you in Forbes? Hey, listen, I could pay somebody on Fiverr to get me on Forbes. <laughs> it's not that hard. I can I can pay somebody to hire a contributor to distribute a fucking dumbass Forbes article. And even though it's not a main Forbes article, it could be a contributor article, but it still got the logo Forbes on it. So that's your claim to, to respond to the guys who are criticizing you. Were you on Forbes? Nigga, you were on Forbes, but you weren't even the main show. Miriam was, and we don't even know who the fuck she is. You were just a, 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 a chief technology officer of a company that never went anywhere. So your, your claim or your response to the haters is cap, bro. It's nothing but 110% cap. And the fact that Flacco, who's on YouTube, couldn't just YouTube, why not, and realize that, hey, <laughs> hey, what's this, bro? Why do you only have three likes? And one of them is from me. <laughs> y'all want to back one of them likes is from me you know why because i like to support you know brothers because y'all be like ah oh, he's black why do black people gotta tear other black people down right that which is a funny thing in this content creation space which sucks right especially when you're in the the, the content credit space right which is a space that we're in particularly in the manosphere when we criticize certain content right especially if you're black for some reason, it's an extra hurdle that we have to jump through because when it comes to criticizing other black men, apparently that's a no-go zone. This is why we don't have a fucking community because y'all prop up scammers and you demonize the ones that are trying to help you. You want to talk about black community, black community, this. How, how is it that this man is allowed to get away we're not only dissing black people, dissing black women, but also being able to hide behind black people when the criticism is due. You see, most of y'all niggas ain't gonna scare me off with that bullshit. 
Yeah, call me Nigerian. Call me now. Oh, I'm not a real black man because I'm calling out another black man. But the fact of the matter is, this black man that you call an original black man is stealing your fucking money and robbing corporations blind. And y'all are going to look at me saying, because you're black, I'm not supposed to criticize another black man. You see the way he makes fun of DJ Academics? He's Jamaican. Livingston Island. Livingston Island. You Jamaican. You got that accent, boy. Oh, just because he called you out and he's black looking, but because he's from Jamaica, he doesn't have the right to talk about you. Black folks, we got to fucking wake up. And I'm being serious, guys. I, I, I'm genuinely being serious. Black folks, we need to wake up. We need to fucking wake up. I don't care if you consider me part of black community or whatever the fuck it is, but I want you to answer this question. What the fuck is a black community? Because if you're allowed to let, allow, let, you, if you allow scammers to just willingly come in here and convince you to turn against your own people that look just like you because they're trying to let you know what the game is. What the fuck is an actual community? You let me know that shit because from where I'm sitting here, we don't have a fucking community if we allow losers like this to come in here and co-opt your minds and make you believe that the people who are here to turn you around are actually scamming you. And it's not just black folks, people. He's got other Nigerians involved in it. For those of you that know, my ethnicity is Nigerian, right? He's got other Nigerians believing this shit, which makes no sense because it's like, hey, wait a minute. I, I thought Nigerians were known for scamming, right? So how is it that we have Nigerians being scammed by a non-Nigerian? That doesn't make any sense. <laughs> that's kind of funny to me, right? But that's one of the biggest hurdles I face in this particular space, especially when it comes to criticizing this guy. is because you see a lot of people come at me and say, the most common criticism I get is, well, you're not really black. So you can't talk about Lord Marquardt. Now, if you guys believe in the chat that that's the truth, and because I'm from Nigeria, and maybe I don't, maybe I don't look black. Maybe I don't look black. Maybe I'm not a black man. Maybe in America, I'm not a black man. I'm just a, di a different kind of a, a being. So if you guys, if that's true, maybe I'm not allowed to talk about other black people. Maybe, maybe, maybe I'm not part of that community. Maybe I'm not, I'm not part of the whole situation. Maybe, maybe we just let other black folks allow themselves to be scammed by their own people. Because when, when other people try to call them out on it, they use a whole race and hide behind that shit. Y'all niggas need to wake up. Because a lot of niggas that are claiming that they're here to help you put down for the hood are the main ones that are stealing and robbing y'all niggas blind. And they ain't done shit for you yet. But yet y'all crucify the ones who are non-blacks trying to do something. Which is crazy to me. So I had the guys, I had to harp on that for just a second because, you know, that's a criticism that I get that a lot of non-black YouTubers don't get. When Destiny calls him a scammer, no one came at him with that. Oh, you a crabs in a bucket, nigga. You, you just trying to turn another black man down. They never get that criticism. But for some reason, when other black people are trying to do it, we get silenced by people that's supposed to look like us. This exposes the hypocrisy within us would be community that we have and exposes why we don't really have a community in this country and why black people, if we need to get ahead, we need to ditch the fucking chains that has been around our necks for the past 400 plus years. Financially, literally, education wise, it's there. Economically speaking, it's there. Think about how much money a lot of young black men following this clown would save if they didn't invest in that shit. Just think about it. That's that's what yeah, that's actually for us, yeah, right? Yeah, that's not a blog, my boy. Yo, right. And why like I asked that because I wanted the people to know who they're dealing with. Before we even dive into the content creator shit, I appreciate right? that. Yes, I sir. wanted them them to know the caliber of human being we're dealing with, right? Because like, like when we talk about the content creation, yeah. Like they like like they they tend to box in content creators in like a certain right, yeah, and like judge them off their subs. But, like, we're dealing with a dude who made millions no. before even touching the fucking YouTube channel, right. right? So now let's transition into when did you say, yo, you know what? I'm about to start a YouTube channel and why? Because a lot of people will say that the big homie started a YouTube channel to start a cult. Mm -hmm. And to kind of, like, right? And to I need be a t-shirt. I'm, I'm a cult leader t-shirt. <laughs> yeah. I got a super villain t-shirt. You did? Yeah, man, come uh, on. I am the bad guy out here in a real way. But it gets Speak like on that. that. Well, number one, yeah. it is no measure of good health yeah. to be well-adjusted in a sick society. Mm. You dig? Bro, that's a bar right there. Yeah. Wait, 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 wait. Say it again one time, bro. They missed it. That's they might have missed it. It is no measure of good health yeah. to be well-adjusted in a sick society. Man, that's a bar. So 
number one, there are a lot of cold school. How is that a bar, Flacco? You sound like you meat riding hard, bro. Like, chill. Alex Schmidt, shout out to you for the two dollars super chat. Platform and scammers just for content is money. No, it's true. It's true. And it's sad because the world right now we're living values fakeness over realness, right? Realness get uh, uh, deplatforms, fakeness get promoted. That's why society is in a fucked up places. Yeah, it's funny how he says you can't succeed in a sick society or whatever. You can't, you can't. What, what did he say? Uh, something with a sick society, meaning, hold up, let me play this back one more time. The, the little bars he was just spitting. There are a lot of cults going on that we don't appropriately address. Started a YouTube channel to start a cult. Mm. It's a kind of like, right? It, it's I, need a a <laughs> I need a t-shirt. I'm a cult leader t-shirt. <laughs> yeah. I got a super villain t-shirt. You did? Yeah, man, come uh, on. I am the bad guy out there in a real way. But it gets Speak like on that. that. Well, number one, yeah. it is no measure of good health yeah. to be well-adjusted in a sick society. Mm. You dig? Bro, that's a bar right there. Yeah. Wait, 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 wait. Say it again one time, bro. They missed it. They might have missed it. It is no measure of good health yeah. to be well adjusted in a sick society. It is no measure of good health to be well adjusted in a sick society while you are actively contributing to that sick society by lying and actively scamming people. You did a crypto rug pull for two grand. You rug pull niggas for $2,000. This is how cheap and grimy this fool is. He's so rich that he's going to rug pull his own audience members for two bands. Two bands, bro. I can spend that in less than a week. Like, I, that's my expense right there, bro. Two bad gone. So you mean that for a millionaire, you're willing to lose it all for $2,000 on a crypto rug pull? And you want to tell me you're not contributing to that very same set sick society that you're just actively preaching about that Flacco is calling bars right now? No, Flacco, we didn't miss that because he's actively scamming us right now. But Alex, you're right. A lot of these guys platform scammers because it's the new way of making money. Man, that's a bar. So number one, there are a lot of cults going on that we don't appropriately address. Yeah. I grew up around one of them. Mm -hmm. Westside Denver Lane PDL. Oh, wow, that's a gang, right? Yeah. Yes. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow, yeah. Wow. Yeah. wow, that's not serious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, they have a language. Yeah. Well, I'm big and back being boo, bulking on the bing bing, blah. Yeah. Okay, they got a language. They, they have religious practices, including dances and songs. Mm -hmm. Sweet daddy got dick. Sweet daddy gets active. <laughs> you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Um, they got their own little dances, kind of like when you know people catch the Holy Ghost yeah. in church. And they even have their armies. And mm -hmm. they commit indiscriminate murder based on color. Oh, Pill Wilson. Pill Wilson is a classic Laura Marquette fan. He says, you make content about this man regularly. Go outside. Okay. He makes content about Kevin Samuels multiple times while he was alive. He's still talking about Kevin Samuels, making money off of him while he's dead. Uh, he talks about Kevin Samuel. Uh, not Kevin Samuels, DJ Academics. Uh, who else is he be making fun of? He's talking about Destiny. He made multiple videos on Destiny. He's been making multiple videos on other content creators. He did three different live streams on DJ Academics, back to back to back to back, motherfucker. Same thing with all these other Destiny, oh, back to back to back. Matter of fact, the Destiny one was actually more embarrassing because he ended up taking that down afterwards. And also, he also made a song about your boy and made multiple videos about me back to back to back which he took down but dumbasses like you're gonna come over here and say oh you're making content about this guy regularly go to his patreon there are three or four videos about me that he's made and a rap song that he's he, i think he left that on his youtube channel still and you guys are gonna sit here and say i'm obsessed with like bro the only reason I'm talking about this guy because he's an active scammer and I have receipts to prove it. And the fact that there's still people listening to this crap like you who are going to sit there and say, go outside. Nigga, I live outside. Why do you think I don't stream every day like this guy does? Okay? And I'm pretty sure I make similar amount of money that he does like, like just by working in the real world because YouTube is not my this, YouTube's not my business. But if you actually stay long enough and pay attention, you realize that a lot of these guys live off of YouTube. And when you want to, you know, the fun thing about, you know, just, you know, doing your research and really looking into people, you're able to find out situations about their background. And if you were actually able, smart enough to watch some of the videos and pay attention so you don't become a dumb fucking cult member, what ends up happening, bro, is that <laughs> this guy right over here, um, yeah, bro, there's a lot of shit under his belt that's scammy. That doesn't work. That bamboozled a lot of people. So you telling me go outside, nigga? I live outside. He lives on YouTube. I broke down his businesses. I found his. I found a lot of information about his shit. His only working business right now is YouTube. And you telling me to go outside? He can't go outside. He has to be online. 
You understand that, right? He has to be online. So this right here, P. Wilson, I hope that don't stand for pimp because uh, we'll expose your ass quick. Don't hide behind an avatar, bitch. We'll expose you too. I expose a lot of fan members in here too. Like if you're here talking shit, we'll expose your ass too. Don't, don't, don't get it twisted, bro. So this guy makes content about me, takes it down. He exposes children. So you guys like it when he talks about kids, young girls? Is that, is that what it is? You love it when this guy talks about young girls or masturbates in front of other people? Is that what it is? Because I can tell you, he doesn't go outside. Get your dumb ass out of here, Peel Wilson. You sound like a crackpot. Alert, probably up. How often do we see the goofy African-American? Oh, American I can't debate him because the first time I went up there to ask him a question, he blocked me. Like, literally, the only reason why this is the way it is right now, because I had information for the rest of the audience to know. And the first person I wanted to confront was him. You go to the this. It's the Angry Man episode. Like, literally, I played that on stream. The Angry Man episode where he tried to pretend he didn't know who I was. And the Angry Man said, oh, wait, I know Duke the Don. I just did content with Duke the Don last week. So you can't pretend you don't know me because the person you're doing content with did content with me the week before. Who you talking to, bro? I'm out here. I don't need these niggas. I, they come to me. So he pretended that he didn't know me while I was in his chat saying, hey, let me up. Let me ask a question. Let me up. I got a question about Fletch app. Let me up. Uh, why is it that it's saying that the only amount of investment was $250,000? And why not? It, it dissolved and it's saying on your tax information that you dissolved the company. There was no record of it being sold. Can you answer that question? That was what I was planning to do, but I got blocked. But dumbasses like you who don't know the full story are going to come up here and say, go debate them. I'm sick and tired of y'all saying that. How can I debate someone? I can't even. I'm blocked. I'm blocked. The only reason why I'm talking to y'all and not talking on his platform right now is because I'm blocked. I need an outlet. And since I have my own platform, I'm going to talk to my audience about that. And you could take that to the fucking bank. Oh, by the way, this is all attitude. I'm not, I'm not actually like angry or anything like that. I'm just just talking but i want you to know that whenever i see this same kind of comment from you stand boys uh p wilson you're not fucking original you're not original you understand that right every single fanboy of lord marquardt asked the same question go debate him why don't you debate me how can i debate somebody was that was blocked i even came at him on my personal account like hey this is my personal youtube account all right drew fucking duca right here bro my name right there legal name drew fucking duca I'm going to come at you on my personal account. Let me up there. He blocked that one too. I can't talk to this nigga because he won't allow that. So if he's willing to block conversations like me, why are you surprised that he blocked or deleted the live stream that he had with Destiny? Why are you surprised that he edited the live stream that he had with Destiny that he put up there and then took it down because he knew it looked bad? See, y'all assassin fans are so down bad, it's not even funny. You know your fucking hero is a goddamn loser. <laughs> it is sad as fuck, realistically. But you come in here attacking me, knowing fully well if you went... I'm Hey, P. Wilson, go into your chat right now and ask the same question. Matter of fact, you know what I'm saying? You know, I, got a, I got a challenge for you. Go into the chat and just say my channel name. And see what the fuck happens. And then see who's a runner and who's a real one out here. Don't fucking sit there and attack me because I'm not going to block you or do shit to you because I don't give a fuck about you, P. Wilson. I want to educate you. But don't act like you can't just take it to the same person you are talking to right now and watch him block your ass in an instant. All that ism out the fucking window. I dare you to. Matter of fact, if you do it, I'll give you $50. Send me your cash app and you got to send me proof that you did it. And if he didn't block you and you send me proof that you did, I'll give you 50 bucks right then and there. You make a quick $50 right now, less than an hour. More money you're making in an hour than you make at a regular job. Because I know you ain't getting paid 50 bucks an hour. I'll pay you $50 right now. Fuck it. I'll give you $100. Go ahead and go to his chat room right now and ask him the same question and watch away. If you don't get blocked, I'm giving you $100. <laughs> but you're not going to do it because you know the fucking truth. So, P. Wilson, get your weak ass dumbass shit out of my fucking chat and go take it to the man that's really in, uh, in, in pro that really got problems out here. Don't fucking sit there and talk to me about this bullshit. It's not me. It's a problem. I came to him because I'm a man. I step up to niggas. I don't run from challenges. Matter of fact, he runs from me. I don't delete my live streams. He deletes them. Don't, 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 don't come at me with this bullshit, bro, because I'm not the one. <laughs> I don't run. Like, I already, I already knew everything about this nigga's life before I even fully exposed him. I just gave him the leeway to try to at least try to help him out. And the moment he blocked me, I let everybody else know what the fuck I found. 
So step step off with that bullshit, P. Wilson, because if you, hey, let me know too. My email's in the chat. I'm serious about that. I'll pay you $100. Next time he goes live, ask about me. Ask about the, any of these questions up here and send me video proof or screenshots in the email right there and there. Say, I'm P. Wilson. I sent it to him and he didn't block me. I'll give you $100 cash app. Put your cash app in the thing. There ain't no thing for me, bro. Just let me know. If you if you really about that, but I have a feeling that he's gonna block you. So if you're really a fan of the fan of the isms, you know, and you you're not you're not <laughs> you worried about getting banned, don't fuck around with this shit, bro. All right, the, l- listen, bro, you you fucking with real ones out here. We're not we're not we're not a fucking joke. Uh, unlike this fake technology over here, you're talking to real technology, and it's just not me. My cousin's a fucking engineer. My fucking uh, the person that, that that does a lot of the uh the, the research that we have over here, bro. Bro, this nigga, he's on a way. You think I'm on? You think I'm on a different level, bro? This nigga's on a way different level than I am, and I'm not. I'm not afraid enough to admit that. Way different level, bro. This guy can get into shit that you wish he can get into. Matter of fact, he can shut shit down if he really wanted to. So don't play around here, boy, because we really do our research out here. So hundred dollars on the table right now. Are you gonna take it or not? Let me know. Population call out that cult, like that at all? And what do they teach you to do? Ride on the enemy, yeah. bud. Mm-hmm. Blood, I'm a bus on the crab. Blood, I'm active. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and they even have their own markings that go along with it. Mm-hmm. I got, I got homies I didn't bring here on purpose. <laughs> yeah, of course. I homies I didn't tell that I'm back here. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, they got a a, a CK on their neck. Mm-hmm. They got people hood on their forehead, whacked out. Yeah, no, that's a dangerous cult. Yes. Then what do I do? Peep this. So I'm chilling with my folks last night. Mm-hmm. People in LA I grew up with. Yeah, they doing what people do. Hang out. You, you heard me hop in the koozie. Uh, Turn on the TV, watch the game, yeah. have some barbecue, have some drinks. Now, you squashed it with, like, Kevin Sanders before his death, right? We can't even – you squashed beef. Yeah. See, there was never any beef. Yes. And I'm glad you asked that, and mm-hmm. I'm going to be very brief about uh, – Maya LaShawn, the reason why is – I don't know who you're saying giving uh, so much – if you're talking about this guy, this loser over here, P. Wilson, because he's pretending he's not a fan, uh, but he really is. Was, uh, shut the fuck up, boy. You a fan. Uh, don't lie to yourself and don't lie in my chat room. Take the hundred dollars challenge. Say the next word out of your mouth. Hey, uh, 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 guys, uh, uh, moderators. If the next sentence out of his mouth isn't, I accept the challenge, and I'm gonna go into his chat room and ask the question. Ban him. Get rid of him. Get rid of him. Because you just over here trolling at this point. It is what it is, bro. Get rid of him. Because if you're not, hey, say yes or no. You either accept or decline. If you say if you decline, then shut the fuck up in the chat. If you accept, then put the money where mouth is and send me your cash app info, bro. I'm trying to pay you. I'm trying to give you free bread, bread, bro. More money you're making an hour than your entire fucking life right now in this fucking moment. I'm trying to get you bread. And the reason why uh, I'm I'm talking about it because you won't believe how many times I get the exact same unoriginal comment that P. Wilson puts up. Well, if you're so bad, go ahead and debate him. Debate him. It's like, yo, this shit's annoying, bro. I can't. How can I debate someone that blocked me on all my accounts? Like, shut up, boy. That's such an easy cop-out. It's not even funny. So how about this? Since you're not blocked currently, you go ask the same questions that I'm asking right now. And I'm going to pay you $100 for it if he doesn't block you. And you have to send me proof that he doesn't. So if you're not, shut the fuck up. All right? No, like it's one of those things where it's like I had the reason why I, it's not even giving him attention is basically for anyone else who's watching this who are Laura Marqua fans that says, Well, this guy's just talking to you. Why don't you debate him? This this challenge is open to all of you. I'm putting it out there. hundred dollars right now. Go ahead and put the name out there. Ask the same question in the chat. And if he responds to you or if he deletes you, I need the screenshots of it. Whatever response or lack of response you get, I need the screenshots of it. All of y'all send me the DMs. All of y'all with those emails talking about you need, to, you need to just debate him, bro. Debate him. I can't. You're telling me to do something that I physically can't because he blocked me. So it's so annoying getting those same messages from these losers saying just do it. So I, I would much rather spend a little bit of time just going over why it's not happening. And matter of fact, I would even issue a monetary challenge to prove to you how weak this motherfucker is if you're willing to take it. Right. So that's all I'm saying. That's the only reason why I got to give this 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 attention because it's like it's like I'm tired of getting those emails after one of these videos that I do. They're like, oh, just debate him, man. Why don't you just talk to him? Like y'all act like he's a reasonable guy. He's not reasonable, bro. You can't talk to this guy. He will block you. So I'm just addressing it here once in and for all. Anybody here that you see like P. Wilson over here that's talking about just debate him, right? And then after they get called out, pretend that they're, they were never really a fan. Oh, you're no, you're a fanboy. Shut the fuck up, right? If you if you acting like that, listen, just take the hundred dollar chance. I'm I'm listen. 
I'm giving you, I'm trying to give you a hundred dollars. Like, come on, bro. That's gas money right there, bro. <laughs> like what you talking about? Like that's a hundred dollars. Just take it. All you got to do is just ask the same question right now that I'm asking. Ask the same question that Flacco isn't asking right now. That's it. So that's the enough attention I'm going to do. I'm going to give for that. But that that's, that's really what it is. Um, The real Blackula says, Duke the Don, do you think that, uh, uh, Lord Marquard possibly works for one of the three letter agencies. No, he's not that smart. He thinks he is, but he's not. He's not smart enough to do it. Like, he, he's not. <laughs> Trust me, bro. He's not. He, he, I'm going to tell you that right now. For someone who actually, I, I used to actually work for the state department before I actually do what I do right now. So I, I did a lot of work with the state of Wisconsin, and it was very, very interesting work that I did. And I can tell when people are part of certain agencies and when people are not part of certain agencies, and this guy is not. And if, if anything, if you want to know how we're going to get certain information, there's a reason why I'm able to do it. So just leaving that out there. But, hey, Jared, I got you with that wrench, bro. Don't worry about it. passed away, right? So I'll be very yeah, brief about uh, yeah, it. Absolutely. But as I said, I've never in my whole life mm -hmm. been a hater. Absolutely and I've not. never, I, I, when I see people win, I'm so, I'm proud of them. Mm -hmm. Hear me? Shout out to you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, man, I appreciate you, man. A lot of respect. Yeah. You wouldn't be here without work ethic. You, you know what I'm saying? Without you too, though, man. Hey, I appreciate you. Feel hey, me? Thank you. Bro, thank I you. was in a fucking college dorm room, like, watching you, my nigga. You feel Word. Me? Yeah, bro. See, that's, that's what adds it up for me. Yeah. Right there. I appreciate that. Yeah, man. Yeah. Love, man. Yeah. Look. Oh, man. See, you about to get me emotional. Bro, nah, come that, on, man. It's true, that's, man. That's what means something to me because yeah. I was in this world without guidance. Yes. Mm. Do you know how different and more efficient my path to success could have been if someone would have just gave me some game? Mm -hmm. When I was in Berkeley, I did not know what to study. I ended up in political science. Yes. Yeah. Not knowing it was some useless BS. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. The older man could have said, had no idea what to study in political science, but you dissed someone like Destiny for getting a music degree? Really? Bro, I went out. I was an aerospace engineering major, bro. I literally went to school to be a rocket scientist. Do you understand that? But yeah, you over here are a political science major. I piss on your fucking degree with my shit. I just just let you know that, bro. Just understand who the fuck you're dealing with. We're not the same people, right? But like you heard him here and you see all the bragging that he does. Well, your education sucks. Your education is this, but like, bro. You were a whole political science major, dog. <laughs> That's as worthless as a sociology degree, dog. And you hope you understand that, right? I hope you know that. Political science is a useless degree. But yet you use the fact that you went to John Hopkins to beat that over the heads of people that didn't go to a prestigious sounding school. Bro, get, get that shit out of here, bro. You, you sound lame as hell. And that don't pay, youngin. Yeah, tech in tech. Yeah. Yeah. Mess with this electrical engineering and computer science. Yeah. You know, mess with this accounting. Yeah. Hell, mess with mortuary science. Something that will lead you to a vocation. Absolutely. Gainful employment. Mm -hmm. That's why I did it. Make your path easier. Mm -hmm. So I appreciate that. Now, getting back to uh, Mr. Samuels. So number one, and a lot of people don't know this story, and there's so many people that can vouch. Mm -hmm. And there's documentation. Yeah. When Kevin Samuels and I became familiar with one another, at that time, I was more famous than he was. And yes. I wouldn't even consider myself famous. Mm -hmm. um, the way I became, I came to know him is one of my youngins mm -hmm. DM'd me and said, Marquette, there are two people I get a lot of great advice from, you mm -hmm. and Kevin Samuels. Mm -hmm. He gives me great business advice. I just did a consultation with him. Yeah. You guys should do a collab. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't read all my DMs. My assistant reads the DMs. She'll sometimes respond if she knows what I'm going to say. She's been with me for five years, yeah. right? In my other businesses before this. Mm -hmm. She'll respond or she'll do the requisite research and present the information. Hey, Marquette, they said this. Who's Kevin Samuels? It's this person. What do you want me to say? Mm -hmm. Do you want me to reach out, set it up? So she comes back and she says, you know, you're not going to like this. She says, so-and-so, which is one of my youngins that I've been mentoring for a while. So-and-so said he paid this guy this money for a business consultation mm -hmm. and you should do a collab. So I figured that'd be great. I researched him and I was going to reach out to him and say, hey, let's set up a collab. She's like, but I researched him and he doesn't have any requisite business experience oh, wow. that he could give advice to anyone, yeah. not, not paid advice. Yeah. So I said, oh, say word. So I look into it and she's like, yeah, look at his website. And then so we, I was like, okay. You know. Mind you, this political science major is talking about Kevin Samuels not having any previous business requisite to give advice to people, right? Meanwhile... We have a political science major. And so if you want to talk about his other degree, he was a teaching degree. Yet he's qualified to give more advice on business than Kevin Samuels, who doesn't have it. From my standpoint, y'all both don't have any experience to talk about business whatsoever. None of you guys do. None of you guys do. So the fact that he's projecting on Kevin Samuels while actively dissing him was so just, just so telling. Now that's sick. What do I do? Do I go on YouTube and make a video? <laughs> no. no. I DM'd him mm -hmm. on his Patreon 
hey, you know, this young man who's one of mine, yeah. paid you this amount of money for a business consultation and we've checked and we don't believe you have the requisite experience to give business advice, yeah. not about a tech company, to this young man. Would you be kind enough to refund him? Mm -hmm. He didn't respond. Then we emailed him. Okay. He didn't respond. Then we reached out two more ways. Mm -hmm. And my assistant was doing all of this. Yeah. Documented two other. Correct. Yeah. He never responded. I'd like to see it. So then I said, let hell fire rain down on him because <laughs> yeah. he's a dirtbag and he's scamming the youngins. Yeah. That's not what an OG does. Mm -hmm. OG takes care of the youngins. You school the youngins. You game them up. You don't take from them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so at this time, okay. I made the video, Kevin Samuels exposed. Mm -hmm. He was not famous. So that goes against the lie that you hear a lot of people say, you were cloud chasing. Yeah. He wasn't. When I made the video, I had more subscribers. I had more patrons. Yeah. I was the big, I was big to him. Yeah, big I'm home. putting him on. Yeah. He became famous because he was disparaging a black woman in the public sphere mm -hmm. off some Jerry Springer, Maury Povich stuff. And yeah. then after that, he started giving. But you do the same thing day in and day out. Matter of fact, the last video we covered of you, you were calling women, uh, black women, fat black bitches. Like just because some lady was named Monique or some shit like that. Right. So. Or Destiny. That's what he said. No, when we covered the video on Destiny, y'all remember what he's like, oh, Destiny? What kind of name is Destiny? That sounds like a fat black bitch. You said that. And even your episode where you try to be a discount fresh and fit, you also take advantage of black women, at least the ratchet ones, and you capitalize on that for views. So you were no different than Kevin Samuels. Even you tried to be a mini fresh and fit, but yet Kevin Samuels is in the wrong and you were in the right. Make that make sense, Pimpin meaningful advice which at his age you should be able to do that of course but when a young man young black man goes to you and you scam him yeah on something you don't know anything about and then another adult male addresses you and says refund him mm -hmm. you should have just gave that little 80 bucks back or whatever <laughs> yeah. you know what I'm you should just gave that back yeah of course and i stand on that to this day mm -hmm. now as i said i'm the mayor of saint city yeah so he came through my city he ain't saying nothing you're me just show up yeah somebody banged my line oh hey homie right here you want me to Oh, by the way, nobody banged this line. He stalked Kevin Samuels on Instagram. Kevin Samuels announced that he was going to be on the Bellagio or going to be at the Bellagio. I don't know if he said it at the Bellagio, um, but I, I did. There was a, there was a, I think it was a post or something like that he had on there. I don't know if it was on a story or whatever it is, but there was some, somebody sent me something about that where he had a story where he was posting about that time. It was around that time frame, and they suspected that Lord Marquardt caught wind of that. And since he was going to be in Vegas, Lord Marquardt actually pulled up, but it wasn't because an assistant was like, "Oh, there's Kevin Samuels. Let me call Saint the Center because he's the mayor of Vegas, bro." You're not the mayor of Vegas, all right? Vegas is such – you know you know who really run Vegas? The mafia. The, the people who run the big casinos, the Bellagio, the Aria, right? These these areas where, you know, you walk in, you see a bunch of big money flowing through, all right? They run Vegas. You don't. You, a scammer on YouTube, don't run shit, bro, all right? Matter of fact, the only thing you run is other people's pockets. So just cut that shit out right then and there. You have somebody – no, no, you, 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 you look – at his this nigga's Instagram and stalked his ass. And as soon as you found out he was in Vegas, yo, yo, yo ass pulled up in your favorite grandmama's cut up couch pattern, and you made it. You 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 pulled up and you took a selfie. That's the best you did. <laughs> okay, that's what you did, bro. You didn't do anything more than that, bro. All right, and there it is, right in the background, the Bellagio. Okay, you you you're not you're not big gangster. You're not a big maid. You a clown, bro. You want me to like? Yeah. I was like, no, no, I'm down the street. I'm going to pull up. Yeah. And this is a good story to tell. Of course. Um, and I won't go into the details of what we talked about, but long story short, I'm at uh, a certain resort, and I got a couple places on the strip. Mm -hmm. I'm at a certain spot. They're like, yeah, he had Bellagio right now. Pull up. Oh, for sure. Mm -hmm. Hop out the whip, wearing a bright floral shirt. Man. You heard me? Hop out the whip. Doors go up. He sees me. I hop out. I'm walking straight at him. Yeah. He immediately, I can see that look in his face. Like, oh. <laughs> Did he run or? <laughs> no, he didn't run. Okay, it, no, he like stiffened up. And okay, gotcha. it, it was kind of like one of those things like, oh, like. I've been set up kind of situation, yeah. right? Like, this is not coincidental. Ah. So long story short, I walk up on him. First thing I say to him is like, hey, man, I said, and, you know, just make sure that this doesn't get flagged by YouTube. Mm -hmm. but like, I said X, Y, and Z about you. Essentially, that you guzzle skizzle, Skittles. Yeah. Use a Skittle guzzle. Yeah. yeah. I was like, whether you guzzle Skittles or not, yeah. that's not a proper thing to say because mm -hmm. a lot of men follow you. Yeah. And I don't want people to think that about you mm -hmm. if men follow you. Absolutely. Wait a minute now, but you just got done saying the same breath that this guy scammed one of your long-term pupils, right? So then all of a sudden your mindset shift when you met him. You said, hey, well, I know I called you a skittle guzzler, but I'm sorry. And I don't want your followers to think that you're a skittle guzzler. I'm sorry. That doesn't make any sense. If you were a man and you were really about your pee, you would stand on it, right? You would say, hey, bro, how about you refund my homie's money back? 
oh, all of a sudden you ran up with Kevin Samuels and you forgot about You made a whole video about him. Amen. You're looking at right now a sk Skittle Guzzler. Really? And all of a sudden you meet him in face, face to face. Your first face to face meeting, you're like, I'm sorry I called you a Skittle Guzzler. You didn't even ask for the dude to, to refund your buddy's money back. It's like, fuck your friend. Fuck your pupil. Like, get, let's just forget about him. Let's just take a selfie together, right? <laughs> fuck him. Let's just take a selfie. Yeah, I don't care about that. Sorry I called you a Skittle Guzzler, Kevin Samuels. You fake as hell, bro. Shut up. <laughs> I apologize to you oh, because wow. I don't want anybody following you mm -hmm. with you having the label of someone who guzzles Skittles when you're supposed to be teaching them how to be a man. Mm -hmm. Cause that's but you just said the reason why you made that video because he allegedly scammed one of your long-term followers, right? Or your pupils. So all of a sudden your energy is different when you meet him in person and you're apologizing to the nigga now? Listen, I'm sorry, but uh, if I met you in person, I'm throwing hands. Hands down, I'm going to test some boxing skills, Jack. All right, we're we going to see how well you really know how to fight. But my energy is going to be the exact same. Matter of fact, just don't be surprised if I pull up with you any like any other time within now within or, or sometime within now between now and March. Don't be surprised, bro. And it's going to be the same exact energy. So keep that shit up. But you telling me you ran up to Kevin Samuels, right? After he scammed your boy and you apologized to him? What? What? You couldn't keep the same energy? What? Oh, you a punk, bro. That's not manly. Mm -hmm. He was like, I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. I was like, now you're in my city. You ain't, you ain't. You ain't call. You ain't let me know you're coming <laughs> yeah. I was like, you know, I could, I could do you a favor out here. Yeah. And he's like, oh, you know, we should, we should, uh, you know, I'd be happy to collaborate. Which I'm about to go do X, Y, and Z. He's like, yeah, I got a penthouse here. I was like, yeah, me too. Yeah. Which I think, I think he thought he was flossing on me. I was yeah. like, yeah, no, like, yeah, me too. Actually. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, by the way, this dude told a whole story about how he just bought a penthouse for that five minute conversation and a selfie he took with Kevin Samuels. And that's how you know that story was cap, right? This dude meant to tell us that. After stalking Kevin Samuels' Instagram, he then pulled up on Kevin Samuels. And because Kevin Samuels said he had a penthouse at the Bellagio, he said he bought a penthouse, too, just to stun on Kevin Samuels. You weren't even going to live there. How are you going to buy a penthouse in a city where you already got an apartment or a house, right? Or, I mean, Bridget bought that house that you all y'all got at that. I mean, I, we'll, we'll, we'll release the addresses soon. But uh, we, we know that they were, it ain't your house. It's Bridget's house, okay? She owned that bitch. All right, you don't, right? So you need to tell me that... You have a whole house in the own your own city, but you bought a penthouse just to impress a YouTuber? Really? Really? How sad can you be? Man, how much of a boss do you have to be to buy a whole penthouse to impress a YouTuber? Kevin Samuels, at the end of the day, was still a YouTuber. He influenced a lot of people. He was still a YouTuber. And you bought a penthouse just to meet him? Oh, man. Wow. It sounds like you a real fan, bro. Yeah. He's like, yeah, this is my number. Yeah, just, just call me and we'll put something together. So yeah. he gave me his room number, yeah. what have you. And he's like, yeah, you know, we'll collaborate, blah, blah, blah. You know, next time I'm coming down, if you're in Atlanta, yeah. or, or I think he said he's going to Atlanta after that. But it, yeah. was, it was a cordial conversation. Mm -hmm. So Kevin Samuel said that he was going to collaborate with you. And the funny thing is, Kevin Samuels isn't even really here to rebuke that or even talk about it. And this man is kind of free to say whatever he wants about Kevin Samuels. Matter of fact, ever since Kevin Samuels died, he has not had that name left this nigga's mouth. He's always talking about Kevin Samuels. Always. Matter of fact, it, this is the exact selfie that got him basically a shit ton of views and got someone like Minister Jack pissed off. Because we already know the games Kevin Samuels played behind the scenes to get Minister Jab to not work with uh, St. the Center. So you want to tell me, someone like Kevin Samuels, who was so mad at you, Lord Marquard, because you insulted him and even came at his sexuality the way you did. They got almost 400,000 views or half a million views, right? And he was still willing to do content with you? I don't believe it. Kevin Samuels was not that guy. The fact that he even told Minister Jab to not do content with you exclusively, right? tells me everything i need to know you're lying right now and kevin samuels can't rebuke that lie because he's dead he would have never in a million years do content with you after the way you exposed o'shea duke jackson and his dad even o'shea duke's dad jackson's dad had to come out and say hey bro uh lord marquardt is lying i'm not in jail i'm not some kind of pedophile i'm not some kind of anything i'm i'm o'shea duke jackson's dad and the record that he's talking about is me Right. But you mean to tell me you exposed Kevin Samuels, best friend's dad. You try to take him down. 
you take down all the people around Kevin Samuels, and then also you do a video on Kevin Samuels himself calling him gay, and then when you ran up to him in Vegas, he was willing to do a, 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 a content with you after he told Minister Jack to not do content with you. Matter of fact, Kevin Samuels told a lot of people to blackball your ass. So you mean it's the same guy that says blackball is loser is the same guy that said he's also going to do content with you. You're a liar. You're a fucking liar. Kevin Samuels couldn't stand you. You ambushed him because he had no idea you were going to be here. And obviously, he's an old man not trying to fight or do any have any kind of conversation. So he kept it cordial with you. But realistically, bro, he's not your friend. He don't care about you. He don't even like you. But you out here lying, and he can't even defend himself because he's dead. You a whole-ass clown, bro. We exchanged a couple other words, and that was pretty much it. Yeah. Now, the funny thing about it, too, and you've heard uh, another YouTuber, and I don't want to say his name because I don't know if he wants his name sure. said, but he's a friend of uh, Kevin's. Okay. And he said, Oh, the guy he's talking about is Minister Jap. So he's not saying Minister Jap's name, which is funny because you did. Wait a minute. I think I find this is interesting, right? You just did content with Minister Jap. He's supposed to be your friend. Here you are on a big platform, like No Jumper, and you're not even going to mention Minister Jap by his name. At least give your homeboy some clout, bro, some shine, some flowers. You're not going to do that? You're going to say, I'm not going to mention his name. Really? You made it to No Jumper. You're not going to help your brother out? Really? That's sad, but. I'm going to help you out, Minister Jab, since this loser doesn't want to fucking help you out. And Minister Jab, me and him, I, I, hey, listen, Minister Jab, he's a drunk bitch, <laughs> all right? If you don't believe me, I got tape recorded of me and him going at it, and he was threatening to, like, come up there and shoot me. <laughs> this nigga was talking about coming up here to Wisconsin to come shoot me, bro, on some gangster shit. And during those whole conversations, this nigga was drunk as all hell. His girlfriend was on the phone in that same conversation telling him to get off. Yeah, nigga, don't act like, hey, I recorded that whole shit and not going to expose your ass at any fucking second because you a drunk-ass loser, Minister Jap. And the fact that you're talking about church, check in, church. Hey, all y'all listening to this clown over here, he is a broke drunk loser that always goes out the clubs without doing shit about it and then when he gets in the shootout because he he cashes a check that his mouth can't even write right listen listen he had to go run to his grandma's house right because because they, they're coming for him so he goes to get into the shootouts he runs to his grandma's house but i have video evidence of him me and him going on a live stream because this dude will call me non-stop on my instagram bro trying to fight me because i didn't expose video on his ass that's how petty this fucking loser is. They're all petty. All these Madison people are petty as fuck. And the reason why I didn't expose this video about this loser, which I don't, I, I, I probably will maybe at some point in time if I need content. But like realistically, the reason why I haven't done it yet, bro, is because I honestly felt bad for you. Minister Jack, you need fucking help. Your alcohol problem is ridiculous, right? And here's the thing. I, I may be an asshole, but I'm, I'm a reasonable asshole. Right. I, I know when somebody's going through problems and it's not my job to pile on. And you guys know that's a the theme of this whole entire channel. There's certain content creators I could be digging in like real, real fucking bad. But I choose to back off at certain time. Mr. Organics was one of them. Like after he had that breakdown on YouTube when he was <gasps> and we thought we we're like, yo, you all right, bro? I stopped doing content on that nigga because I don't know. You listen, bro. You don't know what people are going through, especially in their personal lives. And for me, YouTube is a joke. Like, I don't take YouTube seriously, right? So that doesn't mean because I take I don't take it seriously that other people don't take it seriously. So if my criticism is adding to your mental decline, I don't want to be the reason why you off yourself or anything like that. So I tend to back off, hence me being a reasonable asshole. But Minister Jap ain't shit. He an ain't shit nigga, and he will always be an ain't shit nigga. And I dare you to say something about it, bro, because I'll expose your ass real fucking quick. Yeah, I got them tapes, nigga. You were recorded the whole entire time. Every single conversation, every single one of it, you need help, Minister Jap. Like, real fucking talk. You need help. <laughs> like, you need serious help. So I'm not going to pile on your shit, but if you if you act or do something crazy, it's a wrap for your ass. I wanted to do a collaboration with you, yeah. Saint, but I didn't do it because I was a good friend with Kevin, and he used to talk so bad about you, and he said, when he sees you, yeah. he going to knock you out. Oh, man. When he see you, he gonna knock you out. Yeah, big dog. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'm like six, six, one. Yeah. He like six three, six four, something like that. Are you definitely like six two, right? Or six three ish? Because I'm know. like, yeah, I feel like a giant though. Yeah, you hear me? yeah, yeah. See, yeah I feel yeah. like a giant out here. Yeah. It don't matter though, man, because I didn't put some big boy. Y'all, y'all, 
y'all, y'all think I'm playing? Hold up. Let me see if I can. Hold up. There's my Instagram right here, bro. Hold up. <laughs> this is my Instagram right here, bro. I got this. <laughs> Look, you, you see all these audio calls? Hold up. You see all these? That's all minutes of Jap. You, you, you see this shit? Y'all, I'm not playing, bro. I can drop this at any point in time. I got the video to prove it. The video of all these calls. He was calling. His drunk ass was calling me back to back to back to back to back. Bro, even to the point I'm like, yo, what's wrong? Look at all these missed calls. Like, and some of them, were, like, I picked up. I, some of these ones I recorded. This is all Minister Jap, bro. This is all Minister Jap. Look at all those calls. When they can get confronted, listen, bro. Hold up, hold up, hold up. Let me, let me, let me see something. Let me, let me see. Let me, let me see. Let me see. Let me show you something. I didn't, I didn't show you that. Hold up. Let me show you something. My bad, bro. I, I, I forgot that was there. Let me show you something. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this shit, bro. Y'all, let me know y'all can see that. Y'all see all that? This is Minister Jack. This is his shit. So you can't say this is this is my phone. This is his Instagram. Look at the handle. Look at all these missed calls, or and some of these are answered, right? That he's been calling me off his drunk ass. This is Minister Jap right here. All of this shit, right? Me and him going back and forth. All them video calls, like a whole ass nigga. And I got the video, like all the the ones I picked up on. I recorded all of them. What well, you think I'm stupid? Like I'm not gonna have evidence, nigga. Like I'm, I'm gonna have evidence. I have all of it right here. Like who you? Like you? Y'all met? Like listen, I'm telling y'all real quick. All these guys pretending to be men. They're not men. When they can get confronted by real men who don't live on YouTube, they act like little bitches, bro. This is all him. He calling me like I'm his like ex girlfriend or some shit, bro. That dumped this dumb ass. Oh, hold up, let me wipe this shit real fucking quick. Hold up, hold up. Can y'all see this? That that's it. That that's Minister Jack Network. Y'all see that? Y'all see that? Y'all see that? Look at all these missed calls, bro. Hold up. Damn, fuck this light. Look at all these, look at all these missed calls, bro. That's all Minister Jack calling my line, talking about I'ma come get you. I'ma come fight you, bro. Why are you talking shit about me on YouTube? But look at all these missed calls, bro. Look at this. Look at this, bro. Come on, dog. You a whole ass hoe, bro. You whole ass hoe, bro. And you, bro, I'm not dropping the video calls unless this does, unless this clown does something stupid, right? But I, like I said, I'm not the kind of guy to contribute to somebody else's mental health. I, I can recognize when somebody has an alcohol problem. Like, Minister Jab, you have a drinking problem, bro. And every single one of those times he was calling me, he was drunk as hell. This nigga was drunk. Oh, I'm going to come shoot you, bitch. Like, nigga, like a brother ain't packing right now, bro. I dare you to come over here. Bro, like, y'all don't know, like, bro, I'm not even going to get into that shit. You in Chicago, that's an hour and a half from me, bro. I'm in Wisconsin. I can fly you. I can drive to you any point in time. I already know where you live, nigga. You ain't, it's not that special. I found, I found your shit. I found your grandmama's place, too. <laughs> that, that ain't nothing, bro. I already knew where you, where you, you lay your head at. So you coming at me, Minister Jap, right, with all this bullshit, calling me, acting all tough and hood. Even, yo, yo, what's funny? His girlfriend during one of those calls, this shit was hilarious. She was like, who you talking to? Why, who you talking to on the phone? Like, she, he was, why he was talking to me? Because he was talking all that shit. And she told him, like, bro, just come home. Come home. Jap, you need to stop. Come home. Where you at? He's not rich. Jap is actually a broke nigga. <laughs> He's broke as fuck. That's why I don't respect him. I don't respect him. And neither should y all y'all. But, like, who are the main group of people he scams or fools? Black folks, church, check in, church, check in. We got to check in the church, check in the church, yeah. We got to clap in, check in the church. Clown ass nigga. This nigga's a whole ho calling me more times than a fucking ex-girlfriend. The fuck? Yeah, I got them videos, bro. I got receipts. I'm not playing. I don't play with this game over here, bro. This YouTube shit, like when it comes to researching motherfuckers, right here. I got you. So for those of y'all who say, who say like, oh, Duke, what are you talking about, bro? 
Boy, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and he they tower could, over me for sure. Yeah, yeah. Hey, look, somebody could be nine foot eighty. I'm going in. Yeah, I'm going in. We, <laughs> yeah, it don't matter. But long story short, the, this YouTube cat, he said, yeah, you know, when he, he said when he see you, he gonna knock you out. Mm -hmm. I said, word, that's crazy, cause now nah, like like he was like, oh, let's take let's take a selfie. This will be funny. This will break the internet. Mm -hmm. So we smiling, taking selfies. Yeah. Right. And I told dude, I was like, you know, you, that's your homie. I don't know him. Yeah. Um, but there was never a beef, so there was never a, a need to like come to blows over it. Number one. Yeah. And he's a mature gentleman. I would never expect him to do that. Yeah. I think he just made a mistake. His mm -hmm. mistake was scamming that boy. Yeah. Of and then the second mistake was when somebody addressed you, you ain't fess up. Yeah. Of course. Those were the two mistakes. And I also made a mistake, which mm -hmm. was I said he guzzles Skittles mm -hmm. when he does. Well, I don't know if he does or yeah. doesn't. I hear he, he he went out and it was a super thick Latina yeah, around bad. there. You heard me? Yeah, bad yeah praise the Lord. That's <laughs> how I want to go out. <laughs> yeah. So apparently maybe he doesn't. And that's a mistake because we too often put that label on people. And, mm -hmm. and that's not a that's that's a despicable thing to call. Yeah. Someone. So everyone should know that as a man, if you do something that's not right, mm -hmm. righteous thing to do is correct it. Yeah, absolutely. Correct it. Yeah. Um. So that's what I did. And um. so, you know, he was actually the first person I got got bodied in the public forum. Oh, wow. And I heard a lot of other people's feelings. In this. Hey, Muhammad, I don't think you'll even cut it as a fucking engineer, bro. So you definitely don't want to be nothing like me because my work, it doesn't involve YouTube or watching other YouTubers all day. You hope you understand that because I live in the real world. So if you're 23 right now and you think that being an engineer is a horrible thing, you don't want to be anything like me, that's fine. Just know that the guy you're following is pretending to be a technologist. Unlike him, I actually teach people how to code applications. Just go check out the other channel. Uh, we actually have another one coming up pretty soon here. Uh, the other one, I'm actually teach you guys how to um uh how to uh, uh create malware and and not, not like or trojan right how to create a trojan with a, a pdf document or a simple picture or a jpeg file or a png file i can show people how to do that i know my way around a lot of stuff so just because like I, I look where i look or sound how i sound if you don't want to be like me that's fine but listen i possess skills that were able to suss your leader out peace to the saints right that nobody else in the manosphere were able to like produce so if you don't want to be like me fine you could be like every one of these average dumb losers that follow this guy like a fucking cult i don't want you to be like me because i'm me and i'm the only one that could do what i can do motherfucker and you will never be me and i don't want you to be me you should be your own man rather than being somebody else but unfortunately youngins like you don't understand how that shit works so you want to strive to be like other people who aren't really real then you look realness in the face and pretend that you don't understand what that means I'm about what I say I'm about, my dude. So if you don't want to be a real person, that's fine. You can be a fake ass loser like all these dudes online. And I don't want, I don't want losers like you to follow my footsteps. You know why? Because guys like you would never survive. You would never win. You wouldn't even know the technical know hows that I have. You wouldn't have that. I have more in my pinking than this guy has in his whole entire Fletch app and investments. You understand that, right? So don't be anything like me. And if you don't want to actually learn how to do technical shit that can actually get you skills and get you jobs in the real world I, I i don't i don't know how to help you just go buy and learn how to create an nft from the command line why i teach people how to fucking code legitimately like i actually really do that i, I really do that bro i'm really about that i don't just because i don't do it on this channel don't mean shit bro i'm really about that like when it comes to programming i'm about that for peace sakes, bro, I was an engineering student. This guy was a political science major. The fuck are you talking about? You're 23 right now. You think that, like, you know what I was doing? I was studying to be an aerospace engineer. I was literally a rocket science. So you don't want to be a rock. Okay, fine. It's something that you, people like you can't handle. It's fine. You can't handle that shit. But you can never, listen, if you think that this is the way to go, you're already lost at 23. You're lost. And I can't help you. So don't be anything like me, Muhammad. Go go ahead and study Islam or what the fucking isms you got to fucking study, bro. This shit ain't for you. So the bodies just kept dropping. Yeah. Hey, right. So like, I always say this, man. Like, you can never take the truth as disrespect, no matter what form the truth is put in, right? So, Church. so right, right. So like, you were the first to, I guess, kind of, you know, like, dive deeper into, like, Kevin Samuel's background. Yeah. And then I think he went on Vlad TV and, uh -huh. and, <laughs> and kind of, uh -oh. right? And, uh -oh. and like, kind of confirmed a bunch of what you said about like how he never actually now i love kevin simmons right so if kevin samuel's fanboy's gonna take this as disrespect yeah, yeah. the truth can't be no disrespect right we just got to pay homage at times to do where he did make a video two years prior okay calling out certain truths mm. and kevin samuels confirmed damn near everything you said about not actually having a degree yeah et cetera et cetera right right, right, right. so so like when you see he i guess admitted to it during like that interview was it vindication like yo i've been told you all this man nah because 
my life has never been about tearing down. Yeah. And my life has always been building. It's always been this way. And you'll find that people are hyper focused on putting making others small because they think that'll make them feel big. Mm -hmm. I've always been the big homie my whole life. And that's why when I came in a YouTube game, I said, yeah, you can listen to, to so-and-so about how to get the females, mm -hmm. or you can listen to the big homie and check my background. Like I was voted best smile in high school. I was voted Mr. Irresistible. Mm -hmm. I was voted best dress in high school, like, which is irrelevant because yeah. it's high school, but it's- But you were also a pimp, right? But you know, it's convenient. You don't talk about your pimp-isms on this show. That's so interesting, bro. Verifying to you that the whole way through, mm -hmm. I've been flying high. Absolutely. Like I didn't reinvent. I'm telling you from the source. You say so and so wrote a book. Nigga, I am the book. Yeah, I'm the book. I'm the living word. <laughs> nah, Nigga, fact. soak this up. Yeah. But anyways, uh, with regards to him, I didn't. Feel, I didn't feel like yes, he admitted the lies. Because mm -hmm. one thing I realized, truth, seekers of truth, mm -hmm. they gonna mess with the truth all day, every day. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It was only the people who choose blindness mm -hmm. that believed in things that were clearly not true. For example, just recently, somebody said, "Oh, he didn't go to the universities. He said he went to." Oh, who said that? A, a nut. Oh, okay. A nut. Yeah. A nut. <laughs> and, and I'm on my I'm on my live session. My assistant is there. And she was like, and she gets appalled because when you've known someone over a long period yeah. of time and you've seen what they do behind the scenes, like yeah. people don't even know that the things I donate money to, the places I volunteer mm -hmm. around. Uh, real Blackula, you can get a remote job with just a, a basic uh, 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 comp network plus uh, certificate, right? Because if you can get that, you can get you uh, not even if you even have that on your record. Most IT level jobs, like, like basic, it depends on what kind of jobs you're trying to get to, right? Because IT is such a diverse field, it's not even funny. You got field, you got you got guys who work on help desk, you got guys in in different spots. So it depends on what type of remote jobs that you want within that particular field in technology or tech, right? So realistically, there are a lot of different skills that you can get. Some of these are definitely going to help you, but I mean, AWS security specialist. You got to you got to be you got to be a little specific on that. But there are a lot sort of like realistically, even with a Azure certificate, right, where you get some from Microsoft where you're learning Azure clouds and uh, security and stuff like that. That's enough to get you a remote work job. Matter of fact, that's enough to get you a desktop engineering job right now. The same gig I got. So at Microsoft, it's a what? 160 bucks to get the certification. You just got to study for it. Study hard. You get it. Bruh, you're set. So um I, I don't know i they, there's a lot uh godly godly building says i'm 23 and i may be naive but it's saddening to learn just how cruel the world can be being a real authentic figure must be harder than it seems considering how desperate folks are to fake the funk yeah because the real ones get demonized and hate and the fake ones get elevated we're seeing that everywhere bro and even the ones who don't even understand the difference between real and fake will come over here and demonize you it's fucking hilarious, bro. And they don't even know who the fuck they're talking to. Like this clown talking about, I'm 23 and I don't want to be you. Okay, then don't be me. I don't want you to be me. You could be him, but you will be exposed. <laughs> Just guaranteed because he's fake. And fakeness always gets exposed. Hands down. On the world like that, not the foggiest yeah, idea. Absolutely. But she knows and sees and writes checks. Like when I do payroll and I paid out 13000 last month, she knows the names of these young men who are 17 years old in Miami, 19 years old in Wisconsin. Like she knows these people. She mm -hmm. knows what I actually do. So she says, she was like, Marquette, they just said you didn't go to these colleges. She was like, not only did you go, here's a link. He's a distinguished alumnus. He's gotten awards from the Johns Hopkins University, yeah. which means among all the brainiacs who graduated, <laughs> he one of the ones that they're saying you brought honor this upon us. Yes. The degree gives you honor. Yeah. They're saying you brought honor upon us. We're giving you an award. Man, man, man. And, and Facts, so man. I say that to say, like, if people are going to go in the comments and say he didn't graduate from those colleges, mm -hmm. they could have easily just Googled my name and the college name, and yeah. they would have found that link themselves. Absolutely. Yes, but you were a political science major, bro. So that's not what people are arguing. You're saying you're a technologist. You were a teacher and a political science major. None of that has anything to do with the technology, bro. So we can research that and realize that you're a lie. But I want to get to the question about his net worth, and we can end the video right here. But they didn't want to find it. Mm -hmm. And so increasingly, I find in this media game, and I'm learning a lot because I'm not a, I'm not around the world for like a decade, boy. Yo, so I seen like an article, I forgot what it was, right? Where they said, said, said that your net worth is $50 million. Now, I'm not- 100 million. Sure, sure. I'm not, you feel me? I'm going to be more coy with my question. Yeah. But how rich is the sentence in it, man? Because you got some money to you. I'll, I'll just say this. A lot of people, when they say that their net worth is fill in the blank, they might be including a number of asset classes, yeah. things that they haven't turned into cash yeah. or shares in their own company, yeah. of which the value might vary yeah. or not even be there. <laughs> yeah, of course. When I talk about money, I'm talking about actual 
money. Cash. Okay. So how, what's your net have, worth? I'll just say this. What's your net worth? And I always, I try to create like global standards and civilization, the GSIC, G S I C global yeah. standards and civilization. Some things are just impolite. It's not quite polite for me to ask you how much money you yeah. have or how much money you make. A lot of I'm black bro- folks oh, do that. Oh, okay. It's not quite polite. Yeah. But I'll say this. I have a number of banks around the world. Mm-hmm. And oh. the last uh, banker I went to meet, uh, we, we, me and my partner, we flew private over to this particular country. Banker comes mm-hmm. and, and meets us at the airport. And then once we you know, got the first deal done, um, they said, we don't recommend, or excuse me, before we got the first deal done, they said, we don't recommend you put this amount of money in this bank because we only insure up to this much. Yeah. I can introduce you to three other bankers that can insure the rest yeah. so that if anything happens, the government can you know, yeah. secure this money. Offshore bank accounts. I'm just saying that. Yeah. The banker had to introduce me to other bankers yeah. to make sure that we do so ho- wait, 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 time the fuck out. My boy Flacco just asked you what your are you, what is your actual net worth? He saw an article somewhere where it says it's 50 million dollars, it's actually a hundred million dollars. Um, and your answer was, Well, my banker told me not to open up another bank account, uh, and I got foreign bank accounts. <laughs> Never answered the question about how much he's worth because he's broke. This nigga doesn't have money, bro. <laughs> I mean, the money he makes is from YouTube and e commerce. That's it. And he gets all you losers to buy into that. Oh, well, let me go ahead and create a design fashion and then sell it to my audience type of bullshit. He never answered the question about his net worth. I'm going to play it back, okay? Flacco just asked him a clear question How much is the Saint the Center worth? Well, I got a foreign bank account. And last time I met with one of my foreign bankers, they told me not to uh, open up another bank account. And yeah, yeah, that's that's pretty much it. That answered nothing. That didn't answer anything. Simple yes or no. How much are you worth? Are you really worth $100 million or $50 million or even $1 million? How much are you worth? Well, uh, my bank account. You know, the way that it's set up, you know, I got my checking and the savings. All my money is in my savings, and it takes a while for it to transfer my checking. <laughs> I'm going to run that shit back, bro. In case y'all don't believe that this guy is actually broke and he lives off of y'all niggas on YouTube, this is proof. He can't even answer a simple question about his net worth. Do you know why he can't answer that? Because if he gives you a definitive number, I have it. I have all of that information. I can find it. It's not... <laughs> Like fact, I already have it, but it's like if he says any number than what we know, it's another exposure and another video for me. That's all it is. I'm just gonna make another video calling it out and say, Hey, this is what the records show, and this is what he says, and this is why it's a lie. So that's why he conveniently did not answer that question. Because right then and there, if he physically admitted that, he'd have been exposed. And I thought he was gonna do it because then I would have literally I would have been like, hey guys, here's the evidence right here, bro. His only company is this right here. The only amount of money he's ever had to his name that was significant was the this the, the investments he got from Fletch app. And he used that to flip YouTube. So let me just let me just let me just play this one more time. Right in. God damn. Um, and, God damn. But the thing is, I always want people to know that um, life's not about money. Yeah. And most of the people watching will not become millionaires. And here's the most important part. They don't want to be millionaires. Mm. They might talk about money, but they don't want to be millionaires. They don't yeah. even know what that means. But we can all be happy. Yeah. And that's the true measure is to live the correct life and find out how you can be consistently happy. Yeah. And I think that's the most important thing. So that's what I'm trying to focus people on. But with regards to DJ Fat at Dimmicks, <laughs> living's not. <laughs> with regards to the young boy talking about, show me $5 million. That makes me start wondering what he got. Like, yeah. oh, that's the test. Being a number of asset classes. Yeah. On the world for a decade, boy. Yo, so I seen like an article, I forgot what it was, right? Where they said, said, said that your net worth is $50 million. Now, I'm not no pocket watcher. Sure, sure. I'm not, you feel me? I'm going to be more coy with my yeah. question. But how rich is the Santa Center, man? Because you got some money to you. I'll, I'll just say this. A lot of people, when they say that their net worth is fill in the blank, they might be including a number of asset classes, yeah. things that they haven't turned into cash, yeah. or shares in their own company, <laughs> yeah. of which the value might vary. Yeah. Or not even be there. Yeah, of course. When I talk about money, I'm talking about actual money. Cash. And I also have assets. And I'll just say this. Mm -hmm. And I always, I try to create like global standards and civilization. The GSIC, G-S-I-C, global standards and civilization. Some things are just impolite. Mm. It's not quite polite for me to ask you how much money you have or how much money you have. Oh, it's not, it's not polite to ask you how much money you have, but you, you, you have no problem making fun of other people for seemingly being broke. Is that, is that what it is, bruh? Just admit it. You're not worth millions. You're not even worth thousands you're not even a thousand here <laughs> like what you talking about talking to a millionaire bro that's why it's so hard for you to answer this question huh 
Like, if you were really about that money, you'd be like, yeah, I'm worth $50 million. Or, yeah, I'm worth $100 million. And here's why. Here's my assets. Here's what I've done. Hey, let me break this down for you. And see, if you really had the truth, you would do that. But you're not doing that. You just did this weird about roundabout way of saying nothing. Nothing. A lot of I'm black folks do that. But it's not quite polite. Yeah. But I'll say this. I have a number of banks around the world. Mm -hmm. And the last... Uh... Oh, so do I. I have like three different bank accounts. Uh, two of them are in Nigeria. And then I think one of them is in uh, uh, Cameroon. So you're not special, bro. And I'm 28 years old. Hmm. 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 So that doesn't mean shit. I'm not a millionaire. Guarantee. I'm not a millionaire. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not high value. I'm great value. I'm the Walmart brand over here. All right. So we're not making millions. But for him to just use that excuse that I have bank accounts around the world, what does that mean? What does that mean? Anybody can open up a bank in anywhere around the world and say I got bank accounts around the world. I think I got margin accounts open and offshore on offshore trading platforms right now. That's technically in a bank account offshore. What are you talking about, bro? What are you what are you talking about? <laughs> you don't you're not rich. Stop lying. Banker I went to meet. Uh, we, we me and my partner, we flew private over to this particular country. Banker comes mm -hmm. and, and meets us at the airport. And then once we, you know, got the first deal done, um, they said, We don't recommend, or excuse me, before we got the first deal done, they said, We don't recommend you put this amount of money in this bank because we only insure up to this much. Yeah. I can introduce you to three other bankers that can insure the rest. Yeah. So that if anything happens, the government can, you know, yeah. secure this money. Offshore bank accounts. I'm just saying that. Man. Look how he's stroking his knee, by the way. This nigga, <laughs> this nigga is nervous. He is hoping Flacco does not press this issue further. The banker had to introduce me to other bankers yeah. to make sure that we Gucci, and that was not the only country I operate in. God damn. Um, and, yeah, God damn. But the thing is, I always want people to know that. Um, like so just because the banker. What? What? I hope Flacco has a rebuttal to this. Life's not about money. Yeah. And most of the people watching will not become millionaires. And here's the most important part. They don't want to be millionaires. Mm. They might talk about money, but they don't want to be millionaires. They don't yeah. even know what that means. People don't want to be millionaires? Really? People don't know what being a millionaire means? Realistically, you, don't, you, you mean you just said it yourself. Somebody can buy a house worth a million dollars, and technically on paper, they're not worth a million dollars. So what are you talking about? <laughs> like, people don't know what I'm like. What are, you, what are you talking about, bro? You, oh, my God. This is why people are people fall for this bullshit, because he never really answered the question. So uh, short answer is he's not rich. He's not worth $50 million. And Flacco did a horrible job interviewing him. Matter of fact, the fact that this fat, Fucking cankled nigga over here is a goddamn interviewer. It's fucking funny to me. N nigga, you need to chase a diet than chase an interviews, bro. Real fucking talk, dog. Like, chase a speech fucking uh, 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 therapist and a goddamn diet, bro. Because you're not, you not cut out for this kind of work. Let's, somebody, let's swap him with Sharp. Somebody who's actually about Pete. Maybe Sharp might not be able to press him on some of the business stuff, but he can definitely press him about that pimp shit, bro. And that's the shit that I'm really, care I, I'm really curious about. Because I can give a shit less about his companies. We all know he broke. We Y'all know he, he he scams people. It is what it is. But are you a real pimp? And the fact that you conveniently didn't answer that question or even talk about that, it's just very telling to me. But anyways, I'm done with this loser. If you guys want more, go check out the other videos. I'm pretty much done with it. Hey, Peel Wilson, are you still talking in the chat? Listen, I'm 28 and I'm way more accomplished than you will ever be in your fucking life, bro. I'm going to tell you that right the fuck now. I make more money in a month than you will probably see in a fucking year. I'm going to tell you that right fucking now, boy. So don't sit there and act like you, you, you know what the fuck. And the fact that you just said that is exactly what I'm talking about. I make a video about him every three days. Uh, that's not factual. I mean, it's like every other week, basically, because I'm not on YouTube that much. So get it twisted because my real money is made off of this platform. But if you look at his platform, it seems like he tends to live stream every day and losers like you tend to pay him. So um, if you're not going to be in his chat and take my hundred dollar challenge. Don't fucking talk to us like you're a loser. Like you're just one of these 23 old brokies. And it seems like you can use a hundred dollars more than I did. <laughs> like realistically. So it's a free hundred dollars. Just ask your daddy a question. Is he really matter of fact? Ask him how much he worth and tell him to prove it. And then send me the screenshot. All right. If you didn't, and, and, and the thing is, you're here instead of being over there because you're scared because you're going to get banned and your daddy's not going to love you anymore. It's okay. It really is okay. But don't get it twisted that, like you and me are the same. We're not the same people, bro. You're a loser. <laughs> That's just what it is. I don't like, listen, bro. It is like, I, I, I love, I love clowning people like you because you're literally incapable of seeing your own brainwashing. You understand that, right? And this is just more content for us to let 
the world know an example how bad this guy has affected a lot of people. So how about you get from behind the scenes? Because if you don't think we can find you, we can find you. It's not that fucking hard. I'm not even going to put in the research to do or the effort. Because if you guys want to prove that we could do it, like we've done that with other, other, other people that thought that he could talk shit in the chat. We found him. So don't get it twisted, bro. We got skills before you even realize. I got more skill in this fucking thumb than you have in your whole fucking fucking experience that you think that you have, bro. So you not me. Stop stop playing around. This ain't no game. This is serious business out here. He's out here scamming people, and you're too dumb to realize that. You're not me. Stop trying to be me. Go ask your daddy the question that you should have been asking him. Don't get mad at me for doing the work that you should have been doing because you don't have the ability to fucking think. It's not my fault. Uh, But listen, bro. Uh, yes, Mark, he is indeed a cult leader. <laughs> That's just what it is, bro. He really is. Um, he, he does a really good job of doing that. He really has a, he does a really good job alive inside. Um, he said, he said too much money for one bank he to hold. He had opened up three more, which is cap, right? You, you know, it's cap because here's the thing, the way you try to explain it, he's trying to explain it with like, he's mixing FDIC with other laws. FDIC would only insure up to $250,000, but realistically, you could have as much money in a bank account that you want. The, the only thing that they would do is they'll probably move, if you have like a, like over, like let's say over a million dollars, like depending on what bank you have, they'll move you into a prestigious level, like of an account, but that's an account that is managed by an actual private banker. You get a private banker assigned to you, but your money within that realm is unlimited. Listen, bro, I, bro, you thought about I don't hang, I hang out with people multi with multi million dollars, bro, and this is how the shit that they get down. They have a pride. They get like, for instance, let's say U.S. Bank, right? I got one of my buddies who, who's an actual millionaire. Banks with U.S. Bank. And they moved his account to like I forgot what it was like a it's like a like a premium level account for those of you guys who bank with US Bank. I don't know if you guys know what it is, but they moved into like a premium account where they assigned a private banker to him, right? So he has his own private banker. When he comes into the bank, he has his own guy that sets appointments and they come down and sit down with them to talk about whatever is going on in his account. And on top of that, they also partner with advisors that are within the branch itself to go ahead and work on certain portfolios and help the customer basically, you know, find the right products to best fit their needs as their account continues to grow. So the fact that he's saying that my account got too big and I had to open up another one, it's cap. It's all cap, bro. He's lying. Um, and live inside, I know you like to talk shit too as well, but I hope you know I don't got no problems with you. I actually fuck. Like, listen, I fuck with trolls in this chat. In this chat. So like even P. Wilson, like you can talk all your shit, but I actually find you pretty amusing. And don't 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 get it twisted. Like this is all just tough love. I'm actually no mad. I'm not mad at you. Like I don't like listen, P. Wilson, bro. Like we'll talk. Like. <laughs> Like I low key lie. I listen. I fuck with everybody. It is what it is. Whether you get the message or you don't get the message, it's really not up to me. I haven't sold one product. I don't have anything to sell. I'm just out here just talking because that's that's what I do. If I see something that ain't right, I'm gonna just talk about it and I'm gonna leave because this isn't where my money is made. So I have no incentive to lie to you. I have no incentive to sway you guys any other way. It's the people who live their lives on here and have a lot to lose, like the uh, Liver King, right? Who just apologized, which is the biggest mistake he he could have ever done, but he did it right now his life's over because he decided to go on youtube and perpetuate a lie and now it finally caught up to him this is just the exact same thing i got nothing to hide bro i got nothing to sell i don't have a brand and the shit that i really do that actually teaches people about stuff i do it on another channel because i keep it separate i don't i even i don't even promote it on this channel realistically because that's not how i use youtube youtube is like a platform for me to just air out my thoughts video wise and if people fuck with it sure fine. That's fun. If they don't, sure, fine. It's just me putting on my thoughts anyway. So realistically, that's just how it is. And that, that's the way I treat it. But I always find it interesting that people who look at this as a business, right? And then they're like really going in, but then they're going in on lies. I have to call that out, right? It's like seeing somebody, you, 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 it's not saying you know, or you don't know, but like if they're walking off into a train track and there's an oncoming train, I would rather just say, look out. Versus just watch you get smashed up by a fucking train. At least you heard me before the train came. And if you chose to jump off, cool. But if you choose to stay on the track that you're going, don't get mad at me because your ass got ran over. That's just what it is. But realistically, I can give a flying fuck because, believe me, I'm set in my life. I don't need anything else. I don't want anything more. YouTube is fun for me. When I started this shit, it was always fun. It's going to be fun. And literally look at the channel. We clown madness for people for last. But I have other channels too. So um, definitely subscribe to the other channel because um, next week we're going to be doing a – we're going to be writing – programs using windows powershell right um microsoft powershell 
to be able to create a uh not not an nft because we stepped away from lord marquardt to do that but we're going to show you guys how like to create a trojan um uh and how to basically pretty much launch what is called a man in the middle attack on yourself to test it out but to, to see how that stuff works so if you want to get into a little bit what i do um in the real world um you definitely want to check out that channel because it's going to be fire and realistically a lot of the apps or even stuff that we develop on that channel you guys can actually use that and put it on your resume you can you can copy the source code it's all yours you can copy the source code put it on your resume and then you can go ahead and apply to a job and say hey i learned how to build a fucking you know to-do list app or i learned how to do a fucking marketplace or whatever it is right whatever it is that we're working on out there you can use it forever you want whatever you want to use and it's free of charge i'm not charging you anything because i don't feel the need to do so this is genuinely my passion i really live this shit this is my life it's what i do for a living and i'm too busy to fucking come up here and sell you guys a bag of bullshit okay it's just not my thing so uh p i know i gave you a hard time throughout this show but i hope you know that that's how common that's how we run here at duke the don i just Listen to me, I'm, I'm, I'm like that. So uh, I appreciate you guys being here. You could be anywhere in the world right now, but you're here with us. And uh, like, subscribe, and uh, here, I'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace.